back at Minute Maid Park, the Shriners Children's College Classic. It's day two and game two. The Baylor Bears and the Tennessee Volunteers. Brett Dolan with Pat Combs. Delighted to have you with us. Pat, this was a Baylor team that got a 2-1 win yesterday, so they're off and rolling, looking to find a way to at least get two Ws this weekend. Yeah, it was really the uh, outstanding pitching performance from Baylor starter Tyler Thomas that made the difference. What did he held... Uh, Hold the UCLA Bruins in check yesterday and Mason Marriott with the save to close it. Uh, outstanding win, outstanding start of the series for these Baylor Bears. Meanwhile, for Tennessee, they came into this classic leading the offense in every single offensive category. They were held in check by a very good Texas pitching staff getting just two runs, and we'll see if they get a bit of a bounce back today. Well, it was, uh, again, you look at the Baylor or the, the Texas pitching staff, what they've done all season. Not unusual that they had the performance that they did yesterday, but yeah, really put uh, put the hold on this Tennessee lineup and something that they have not had to battle through, much adversity on offense, but they did yesterday. There's Steve Rodriguez, head coach of the Baylor Bears. He's pointing up to the roof. Did a few ground rules. We're going to step aside, come back with our starting lineups. Up first pitch, Baylor and Tennessee from Minute Maid. moments the best fans feel the excitement and don't miss a moment Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now astros.com slash season tickets spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game. A jersey, drawstring bag, a hat and lanyard. As well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting Astros.com slash Buddies. Baylor Bears are the visiting team today in game two. Here's their starting lineup. Brought to you by Specs. Jack Pineda, shortstop leads off. Then Trey Richards and Jared McKenzie and Kyle Nevin. The next three. Valdez, the DH. Wesner will be at first. Esteban Cardoza, Okendo with third. Gonzalez in left. And Kaylee will catch. This Bears lineup today will face Chase Dolander. Right-handed starter for the Volunteers. Yeah, I could look at Dolander's numbers. Off to a great start this season. Look at the uh, strikeout to walk ratio. That tells a lot of the story with Chase Dolander. And a little bit more pressure on Dolander now because you've had Blade Tidwell go down in the starting rotation. Don't know when he'll be back. But Dolander getting a chance here to move up into this Saturday start. He's been outstanding so far. The 6'3", 192-pound transfer from Georgia Southern. From Evans, Georgia, perfect game, freshman All-American. First team last season. But uh, that one of those start in two blowout wins versus his Georgia Southern team that he came from and Iona. But uh, today, a little bit different lineup he'll face with this Baylor Bear team. And three-quarter release, feature a fastball, low 90s. Pretty good arm side run, slider changeup. Great. You look at the 21 Ks and one walk. <laughs> I was going to ask you if that would work for you, right? <laughs> 10 innings, one walk, 21 strikeouts. That'll get you some more starts for sure. 
outstanding command so far for Dolander. Here's Jack Pineda, the shortstop to lead off. Two seventy-five hitter, reached base in 12 straight games. A wave and miss, and we're underway. Indoor baseball today. Temperatures in the 80s outside, but with some sprinkles earlier, some strong winds. We're going to play indoor baseball. Our plate umpire here in game two is Doug Williams. And Chase Dolander has a kind of a ball than a strike. And as Pat mentioned, two starts and hard to imagine a guy transferring. And in his first opportunity of the year, faces his former team in Georgia Southern. But he hits Pineda to begin this game. Yeah, fastball trying to come inside on Pineda. And catches him right in that elbow guard. And you can see his catcher, Evan Russell, setting up in, but that ball just gets away from Dolander. And first freebie of the game goes to Pineda. Putting that oven mitt on over at first. And first base was a crazy place yesterday. We had an obstruction call. We had a first baseman steamroll, a first base coach. We had a runner standing at first who, after a replay review, was called out because he leaned into the pitch that he got hit by. Ended up being strike three, but that was a pinch runner for a pinch hitter. <laughs> <laughs> was no longer at first, but he was out. Yeah, there was some craziness going on for sure, and a lot of it happened. You're right, Brett, right there at first yeah. base or between home and first. It's been a crazy spot. And here's Trey Richardson, the second baseman. Tried to hold back, but that ricocheted off his bat for a strike. Yeah, you gotta believe always with the a starting pitcher coming into this ballpark and you're on this big league mound and Dolander probably all jacked up, but that's that's really the key is to try to control that adrenaline early on. Kind of settle into your motion and not overthrow the fastball. I think Dolander's uh, probably a little bit guilty of trying to overthrow. So far, pitch is getting up and away. Pitch to Richardson. Pineda was off and running, and it was tap foul by Trey. Maybe putting the wheels in motion right out of the gates for the Baylor Bears. This is a team that has hit just three home runs this year, and while they do have some players with some pop that played in some strong wind conditions and such, they are going to try and maybe manufacture some runs here or there. Yeah, I think that's a good call, Brett, early in the season. That Bears half struggle with the power, and you, know, you look at their history, typically Steve Rodriguez's teams do hit a bunch of home runs, but so far this year, let that north wind blowing into Waco can make it kind of difficult. I would imagine. Nice slider from Dolander there. Richardson able to hold. Here's one player that's benefited from just some added muscle, added weight in the offseason. Didn't play summer league ball. Chose to stay back in Waco and hit the weight room. Certainly uh, showing up so far early in the season for Richardson. We're just underway. Lead off hit by pitch to Pineda. Two balls and two strikes to Richardson. Houston area product like so many different players we see each and every year in this college classic at Minute Maid. Big thrill to come home and play in this ballpark again. Pineda running and again Richardson fouls one back. If there's one thing you pick up early on with Dolander's motion especially out of stretch he's not fast to the plate. He's about 1-5, one, 1-6. One, and that should allow Baylor runners to get a decent jump. Puts a little bit more pressure on his catcher, Evan Russell, on a quick pop as well. Off and rolling, no chance to get Pineda. His third stolen base of the year. Is it that left leg, Pat, that Dolander kind of hovers or hangs in the air before he comes down to the plate that costs him some time? Yeah, definitely it. And it's, uh, you know, there's no slide step motion to the plate. So he, you know, that, that big leg kick typically doesn't play well, especially against a speedy team. Let's see if Baylor tries to take advantage of that more often this afternoon. Count's going full to Richardson. It's going to be lifted back and out of play. Some pitchers, Brett, just don't like to slide step. They don't feel comfortable. They feel like they lose too much off their pitches, and that could very well be the case with Chase Dolander. But... 
probably doesn't take those scouting reports long to detect that. And yeah. Put that in those, uh, yeah. those sheets, those reports. Usually one of the first things you pick up with runners or men on base. Under the payoff and another foul ball, so Richardson has seen quite a few already from Dolan. And really making him work. You tend to start to see seven, eight pitches in that bat, and the advantage starts to shift over slightly to the hitter. See if Dolander comes back with that slider. He's thrown about five straight fastballs, and Richardson has done a good job of keeping the at bat alive. Long pause and another payoff. It's outside. How about that sequence? Richardson just kept fouling off pitches, finally works the walk. You know, great at bat for Trey Richardson. No idea to work the walk instead of the pitch count here in the first inning. Dolander yet without a recorded out 12 pitches into it. I was going to say, if I'm Dolander, I'm irritated. I've thrown 12 pitches. I just want to see some outs begin to accumulate. And a couple of freebies early on, which is not what we expected when you see the one walk in his first two starts. He's really shown great command so far. Here's Jared McKenzie. There's about nine or ten outstanding individual players in this classic, guys who could be first-round picks, and you can go down the list, and whether it's this year or next, and Jared McKenzie's certainly on that list. Yeah, he's put together a couple of outstanding seasons for the Bears. A rangy outfielder plays center for Baylor, and so you want to bet the left-handed swings you'll see. Runners going, no chance to offer a throw to either base. So Pineda gets a second stolen base of the inning. Trey Richardson follows to second. And McKenzie quite content to take a strike. Boy, that's a, you know, just all on the pitcher there, Dolander. When you're struggling with your command and really trying to zero in and focus on the on the mitt, making your pitch, and he just kind of kept the same sequence, same timing in terms of checking his runner at second base and Pineda able to take it fairly easily. No throw. Now, second consecutive stolen base without a throw from Russell. Dolander has dug himself a nice little hole here right out of the gates. And McKenzie's numbers might look like he's scuffling just a bit. 188, three runs batted in. 32 advance into his season. Of course, the question to a head coach sound something like is he off to a slow start is he not seeing very good pitching or is he pressing and I guess it could be all of the above at some times I mean you're not going to see a lot of pitches early and then you don't get the results maybe you press a little bit trying to get those numbers back to a more respective level I think that could be the case for McKenzie and I saw him swing a couple of that bats early in the season pitches out of the zone he typically doesn't swing at lately he's been getting better pitches to swing at and he's starting to I think dial it in you know it's it's only a matter of time when you have those great hitters. You just keep penciling them in, and it's going to go off at some point. Usually it takes just one great swing, and then they get things turned around. He could pick up an RBI and just a ground out or a fly out here. Dolander on his 18th pitch, still looking for his first out. And another one spoiled, sent back and out of play. Baylor hitters, uh, Richardson, now McKenzie, done a pretty good job fouling off. Some pretty good deliveries from Bill Lander, and that's another point of frustration as a pitcher. You make pitch after pitch and not able to close out a hitter. That could become a bit frustrating as well. Second and third, and nobody out. And another payoff, and that is strike three call. In a half at the belt. Dolander gets his first out and gets the K of the dangerous McKenzie. Yeah, well-placed fastball. You see Russell looking for that pitch inside, and Dolander catches the top of the strike zone, gets the call from home plate umpire Doug Williams, and gets his first recorded out. That's a huge out. It's huge. And Tennessee's still playing back defensively. Here's Kyle Nevin. Nevin homered yesterday. No wave and miss. At the breaking ball. He's a guy who's really important in this Baylor lineup this season. As we talked about, Brett, in the open, it's you've really got to have, when you have those key hitters, one, two, three, you've got to have that four hole produce. And especially if your three hole doesn't get the RBI pickup and puts a bit more pressure on Nevin. 
It's certainly uh, an opportunity for him as well. Stepping into that cleanup spot. His dad, Phil, would have played many a game here at Minute Maid Park in his lengthy big league career. Now has a chance to drive in two with a single. That one missed off the corner. Dillinger dialed that in, and you can see Russell just set up just off the plate outside. I did miss by much. Good 0-2 fastball. Let's see if he goes right back to that slider. Big pitch to Nevin. Chopper up the middle. Near the bag at second. Ortega's throw. The ball. Lipsy is from the base. Nevin is safe, and the Bears are on the board. They're going to be an infield base hit and an RBI, and Baylor leads 1-0. Yeah, great job of two-strike hitting from Nevin. Just cut that stroke down a bit. Gets the fastball away from him, and really thought Dolan was going to come back with that slider. Nevin does a good job of making contact, putting the ball in play, and does exactly what he needed to do with that infield playing back. Would have been a big pick-me-up for Dolander to get a strikeout after seeing runners at second and third with nobody out. But now Baylor's pushed across the run, and Tennessee, the middle infielder, still playing back a double play depth, hoping to get out of the sitting. Antonio Valdez, wave and miss. Three hits and a couple of RBIs for Valdez on this young season, the Corpus native. A hit batter, a walk, three stolen bases, and an infield single has produced a run. And Nevin running. They're going to throw through. And the throw from Russell is late. Four stolen bases now in the inning for Baylor. Yeah, it's a risky play with the man on third less than two outs, but Steve Rodriguez and the Bears feel pretty confident in the running game here with the leg kick from Dolander, making it awfully tough on his catcher. That was a pretty quick release from Evan Russell and a nice throw, but still not in time to get Kyle Nevin. Baylor had attempted seven stolen bases all season. They've successfully swiped four here in the first inning. And that really sets up well for Baylor's offense again. You stay out of the potential double play. And now Valdez with a chance to add to that lead. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And it's on the corner for a strike. You mentioned some pitchers might not be comfortable with the slide step. At some point, don't you have to make some adjustment if you're basically conceding bases to base stealers? Yeah, no doubt. If you want to pitch at the next level, you've got to learn to do that and or at least cut down that leg kick enough where you know, maybe it's half of what Dolander's doing currently. That, that would certainly quicken him up. But. That one's down the line and left. In there for a base hit, and it's going to chase home a pair. And Valdez, after a wide turn at first, will scramble back to the bag. A two-run single, and Baylor has a three-run inning. Oh, a huge swing of the bat by Valdez, and he saw the backdoor breaking ball from Dolander on the previous pitch, and he tried to go right back to it. That time, Valdez stayed back and did all, only what he could do with that pitch is drive it to left field. Boy, executes that really well and picks up huge two RBI and Christian Scott with a nice pickup for the volunteers out the left field. Got that ball back into the infield quick and holds Valdez to the single. I thought for sure that was going to be two bases. He was able to play it back in to keep Valdez at first. See if he might be off and running. Now you see activity headed out to the Tennessee bullpen and the way Dolander has pitched this year. Just one walk, 21 strikeouts in 10 innings. It's been a guy they've utilized for five innings per contest right now he's just swimming upstream to try and get out of this first yeah I think that was one of the concerns with Tony Vitello you get a couple of pitchers that you know haven't not really proven themselves at this level yet certainly great stuff great arms Dolander coming over from Georgia Southern had a couple of starts so far against that team and against Iona just a uh, a little bit higher capacity lineup here in facing Baylor. Chase Wesner is the first baseman. California native, big rip of the mix. The 
curious to see if Valdez, who's stolen one base this year, if he might try and run and just continue to put more pressure on Dolander and try some extra base. Dolander thinking the same thing. You know, whenever you can take an extra base, just put yourself in scoring position. And we talk about, you know, Christian Scott holding Valdez to the single. Well, it can turn into a double if your pitchers can't hold runners. And there he goes. Could this be the fifth stolen base of the inning? It is. The throw from Russell nearly at Dolander. Not sure that was a great break, but Valdez still swipes it easily. A five stolen base inning for Baylor. And now that great play by Scott is negated. There you go. Valdez picked the right pitch as well. It was a slider down and really tough pick by Russell, his catcher. And he had a little bit of trouble getting out of his glove and just no chance to get Valdez. McKenzie, the lone out this inning, he struck out looking. And that one fouled back to our right. Yeah, 30th pitch of the inning for Dolander. And not what he and Tony Vitello were thinking about before the start of this game. A long pause before the 2 2. Valdez is going to try and take third. That's six stolen bases in the inning. When was the last time at any level of baseball you saw six yeah, stolen bases very in unusual. one inning? Yeah, very unusual. And usually, you, you, now it kind of sends the message after a couple. You've got to quicken that step up. You, you can't be that slow to the plate. But uh, obviously, Baylor picked up in their scouting report that uh, Dolander has not made that adjustment. And they're just going to continue to swipe bases unless he can quicken himself up to the plate. His lips, he has have a play. He does not. I think Valdez is stuck at third for the time being, unless he's really feeling spunky and wants to <laughs> right. come down the line. All right, with this full count to Westner now, another chance for Baylor to add to the lead. Only one out in the inning, so Tennessee defense still playing back. Willing to concede the run if Westner can put the ball in play here. This will be the 34th pitch for Dolander. He's looking for another out. Should get one here. This is very shallow left field. Scott comes charging in. I don't think Valdez is going to be able to tag. He's going to try it. The throw to the plate is late. How about that shallow left field sack fly by Wesner? And the Bears have cashed in four runs on two hits in the first. Well, a great job by Mike Taylor, the Baylor third base coach, getting a sense of where that ball was going to go. And Christian Scott coming in from left field was not camped or putting himself in a good position to make that throw home. He actually started drifting over to the left before that ball's caught. Watch his body and how he positions himself. Then he has to make that adjustment there to his left and then has to square his body up to throw. So just a great read by Taylor to send Valdez testing the arm of Christian Scott in left field. It's great analysis, Pat. We can see it on that replay as Esteban Cardoza Okendo shoots one out of play. If Scott's able to get to that spot, get underneath it with his momentum behind him, I don't think that's a send of the play. He doesn't send him there. Yeah, exactly right. You know, sometimes it's these little things that teams obviously understand but don't execute that cost them runs. No, no doubt. And you even look at outfield play. That's one of the things that outfitters consistently work on. You know, get your body in a position not only to make the catch, but also to make the throw. There's two parts of that play, and Christian Scott executed the first part well, but not the second. Cardoza, Okendo's drove it in four so far this season. What's the most pitches you ever think you threw in one inning? I bet I had a 40-pitch inning one time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just bound to happen. You pitch long enough. You just out of sync. You don't have it that day, and... But if it happens late in your outing, you probably aren't going to get through that. No, that's right. Yeah, it usually happens in the first inning. I think I got yanked in the first inning in one time in my career, and it was uh, I was trying to battle through some injuries as well, and it just didn't uh, didn't go well. 39th pitch here. The Bears have done a pretty good job of in this inning. 
despite the fact they have two hits, one in infield singles, just spoil pitches and foul them off and extend that pitch count even further. Yeah, the upcoming 40th pitch from Dolander, and you know, I got to believe if he doesn't retire Cardoza Kendo, this could be his last hitter. And he gets the wave and a miss. A 40 pitch, six stolen base, top of the first inning. And the Baylor Bears push four across. We could find a way to get inside each other's minds. If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego, I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile in my, my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my, my shoes. Take your favorite teams with you with the brand new AT&T Sportsnet mobile app. Just download the free app from iTunes or Google Play, log in with your TV provider account info, and you're all set. Don't wait. Download the new and improved AT&T Sportsnet mobile app today. Time to take a look at the Tennessee Volunteers starting lineup brought to you by Auto Nation. It's Dickie, Ortega, and Beck, the top three. Drew Gilbert, the cleanup hitter. Trey Lipscomb bats fifth. Luke Lipsius will be at first base. Then it's Russell, the catcher, Scott at left. And Cortland Lawson, the shortstop, bats ninth. They'll be facing right-hander Jake Jackson for the Baylor Bears. Yeah, you see the numbers there. Transfer from Nevada. One with a 2.25 earned run average. is off to a great start. A couple of starts against Maryland and Duke. So tested right out of the gate has been Jake Jackson. He has responded well. Had an outstanding fall for Coach Steve Rodriguez. Really cemented himself solidly in that Baylor weekend rotation. And uh, you kind of think of him uh, of the right-handed version of his counterpart, left-hander Tyler Thomas. You know, not going to blow you away with velocity. He'll sit 88 to 91. But uh, an above-average spin rate. Also backs up his fastball with a slider and a changeup. But really great command, good mound presence. And Jackson has off to a great start in this 22 season. Jared Dickey is 10 for 16 in his young campaign, a 625 batting average. So I would say 2022 has started well for Jared. Facing Jake Jackson. Your point's a good one, though. Normally, this time of the year, these pitchers may have faced a couple of teams in a mid-major and had an easy start, but a couple of good teams in Maryland who played well in Waco and then Duke for his first two opponents. Well, I think that's the uh, that's where you kind of draw it up as a coach. You want to get battle tested early on, see who responds well. And Jackson certainly has. And Baylor figured out they had something pretty special with Jackson after the fall he produced. He has just picked it right up. And of course, the one question mark for him coming in is pitching from. Nevada to Baylor had a high earned run average last year in Nevada, but uh, you know that ballpark that ball carries out like crazy. There's no doubt. As Dickey spoils another. You'll hear us talk a lot about fall competition. Guys, of course, go off, play summer ball. Some may stay back on campus, work out, try and get better, get stronger. But a lot of the competition for the spring occurs in the fall. I mean, you put either yourself in a good position to have a starting spot or you have a lot of work to do come the first of the year. Yeah, it's always the first test, right? The, how yep. you produce in the fall. Then the second test is obviously when you come back from winter break and start to get the uh, the preseason going. Full stroke to center by Dickey. Back is McKenzie. He can't get there. It's going to go all the way to the fence. 
And down four runs early. No need for Dickey to risk being thrown out of third. Ball was stunned pretty well. And Jared Dickey's off to an 11 for 17 start with the bat. Yeah, how about that swing, too? Uh, really fouled off a couple of good pitches to keep the at bat alive and gets the fastball, drills it to center. Now, outfielders will tell you the toughest ball in baseball to catch a, a, for as an outfielder is that line drive that goes right at you because you have to quickly make a decision. Is that ball going to drop in or get over my head? And McKenzie took about three steps in before he realized that ball had some carry on it. Yeah, that just did not look like a good angle. And then yeah. he got caught between having to leap and turn and run. So an outfield mistake for Baylor. It'll go down as a double, but a ball that McKenzie should have had in center field. Well, the Volunteers would love to get a couple of runs back at least. Here in the bottom of the first, Jermel Ortega, the second baseman. Got a couple of home runs this year. He's knocked in six. And that's the one benefit you have is Tony Vitello in that dugout, knowing that, hey, it's a four-run lead. You hate to get out to that start, but it's a first-inning lead. And with this Tennessee offense, not uh, insurmountable by any means. These volunteers can score runs in bunches. Tony Vitello's team had a 1-0 lead over the number one ranked Texas Longhorns in the fifth inning last night. Texas ran off four unanswered. It finished a 7-2 Longhorn win. Tennessee had seven hits. They left nine men on base. Came into that game averaging more than 15 runs a game. That one botched by Kaylee, but again, Dickey doesn't want to make that first out of third base. Yeah, Harrison Kaylee, the Baylor catcher, trying to frame that up for his pitcher, Jake Jackson. Just quite couldn't get underneath that pitch. Freshman catcher, filling some big shoes with the departure of Andy Thomas. There's no doubt. Thomas, a fifth-round pick of the Seattle Mariners. One of the better catchers and hitting catchers in the Big 12 last season. That one is hit down the line and left. It's fair into the corner. Ortega's going to have a double chasing home Dickey. Back-to-back -back doubles. And the Volunteers are on the board in the bottom of the first. Not a bad delivery from Jake Jackson. He's a slider down in the zone. Ortega just goes down and gets it. That ball just kind of hung up a little bit on the inside, but uh, down in the zone, and he goes down and strokes the double. And just like that, back-to-back -back doubles, Tennessee on the board, and still no outs in the inning. This is Jordan Beck. 11 hits, 11 runs batted in for Beck. Hit a couple of line drives to center yesterday that were just outs in your scorebook, but uh, he made some good contact against a very good Texas pitching staff. Yeah, one for three in the day, but uh, three laser beams. and yeah, It sure seems like uh, Jordan Beck is locked in early in this season. Hit 15 home runs a year ago for a team that Finished second in the SEC in that long ball category. A couple of well-placed fastballs from Jackson. A jump ahead, nothing in two. I wonder if maybe your mentality is a little bit different when four runs score in the first. And I, I know that Jake Jackson didn't want to come out here and scuffle a bit. Is he thinking right now, I've got to find a way to keep Ortega from scoring? Or are you thinking, even if he scores, if I could get out of here still with a two-run lead and move this game along a little bit? Well, I, I'll tell you, any pitcher will tell you that, Brett, that's <laughs> what he's thinking is one pitch at a time, right? Just make my pitch. Now, you start thinking ahead, and that's where you get in trouble. You, know, you can't pitch to situations. You've got to just make the pitch. Peck just pokes one to the right. Ortega will be held at third, and Nevin's going to play that one back in with a strong throw to the plate. But here come the Volunteers. Three straight hits to begin the bottom of the first inning. And you had to figure this offense yesterday as we talked about in the open that you know, really struggled against that Texas pitching staff. And they were looking for a better day offensively. And so far, three hitters up. And they're certainly having a better day today. Steve Rodriguez given some defensive signs, possibly his first and third defense. 
Well, he was going to choose to play double play depth with the middle of their infield. Drew Gilbert, he's had a flair for the dramatic. Certainly off to another tremendous start. All he has done this year, Pat, is go 12 for 25 with 16 runs batted in. And this is uh, the middle of this Tennessee lineup. And really, we talk about the middle being just full of power, which it is. But up and down this lineup, there's not an easy out. I would say there is a depth to this lineup that you will see maybe with just you know, four or five teams in the college baseball ranks. Yeah, I think we're seeing one of them uh, tonight. LSU certainly, Agreed. I think, has that type of lineup. That's uh, you, you come into a game as a pitcher knowing you're going to face a, a, a tough lineup like Tennessee and already you're starting to think of high stress pitches and early in this game Jake Jackson's having one of those innings. Gilbert will smoke one in the center. That's down for a base hit. Four straight hits and a couple of runs. And Beck is going to go to third and Gilbert follows to second. Felt like there were a couple of free bases in that sequence, the way the Bears played that back in. But Gilbert has made it a 4-2 game. 17 runs batted in for Drew Gilbert. Yeah, there's no play at third base here after Gilbert strokes that line drive to center field. There's no play at third base with Jordan Beck rounding. Easily makes it. That throw really should have gone into second to try to keep Gilbert at first. Just keep that double play in effect too. That's uh, that's always the key. You try to get two outs with one pitch, and that time not affected. But uh, John Strauss, the Baylor pitching coach, out for his first visit of the day. Back to Drew Gilbert. We talk about how important it is for these hitters, just from a confidence standpoint or a comfort standpoint, to get off to a good beginning. 17 RBIs and 26 at bats seem like it's a that's that's obscene. Good. <laughs> that is obscene. Well, I think Tony Vitella referred to him as uh, the, their team's Lenny Dykstra. You know, the guy that just kind of sells out um, in the outfield for sure. But uh, just plays crazy hard all the time. And certainly there taking the extra base when he saw the throw going towards third. And you saw an empty Baylor bullpen, so... Despite the four straight hits, no action yet. Trey Lipscomb, the batter, and again, this guy. It's been one of the best stories in college baseball, along with Tommy Tanks at NC State. But Lipscomb hit for the cycle, then almost hit for the cycle the very next game. Finished a double shy. 471 average, 22 runs batted in, and a couple of innings scoring position. Lipscomb hit a couple of rockets yesterday with nothing to show for his efforts. He's not had or will have many 0 for games over the course of this season. Yeah, I agree with you, Brett. You just watch the swing, watch the the approach. Almost drilled the center. Yep. McKenzie should have a play. This will produce a run. Beck will tag and score. Gilbert will advance to third. And the Volunteers have answered that four run top of the first with three of their own. First out by Trey Lipscomb, and it's a loud out. Deep to right center. McKenzie plenty of time to corral it, but uh, it does get the sack fly and moves Gilbert from second to third. So Tennessee one swing away here from tying this game. Taylor came into this game having scored 44 runs this year, and obviously they've added four. The combination of Gilbert and Lipscomb have driven in 40 runs this season. <laughs> Just to put it in perspective, right? Luke Lipsius may have been talking to himself all the way back to the hotel last night. Quick appeal, and they're going to say that's a strike. Lipsius was rung up on strikes three times, K'd four times at all, and I'm not so sure any of the pitches he was rung up on were actual strikes. Play made by Richardson with a backhand, and a good effort will keep the Volunteers from adding. Beg your pardon. Gilbert will score, so it's a four-run frame. Richardson made a nice effort to keep that from getting up the middle, but Lipsius will take the RBI. Well, brand new ball game, and uh, you know, the only difference is you're looking at uh, Jake Jackson's pitch count at 23, and uh, Chase Dolander worked it up close to 40. 
It's a little bit more efficient from the Baylor starter, but the results much the same. Evan Russell, the batter. So yesterday, the Friday night version of this college classic, the pitchers, especially the starters, were fantastic. A lot more offense today. That one flied out to right off the bat of Russell, a play for Nevin, and the inning will end. So, the Baylor Bears put four on the board at the top of the first. The Volunteers answer with four of their own in the bottom of the frame. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. Baby got back. Unlimited cashback match. Only from Discover. Excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Coverage of the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by Local IQ. Simplifying marketing to reach local customers. Are you settled in yet, Pat, after a run roll in game one and a couple of four-run frames to begin the first here in game two? Yeah, yeah we settled in, right? <laughs> <laughs> after a 40-minute first inning. Yeah, I guess you'd call that settling in. Yeah, how quickly that uh, volunteer offense can strike. Man, that was uh, four runs on the board before you could blink. So Alex Gonzalez will lead off 8-9-1, and one, and Dolander back out there for the second. What is his mindset right now after giving up four, but then having his teammates play four for him in the bottom of the Oh, inning. man, yes, yeah, a huge pick-me-up. Now you want to go back out there and, and pick your teammates up. Yeah, that's uh, That's got to be the mindset is, uh, thanks, guys, thanks for getting me off the hook. Now let me go back to work. And, and Bill Lander showing some pretty good signs early here in the second inning, a couple of strikes on the board. Gonzalez wraps one on the ground to third. Hop came up for Lipscomb. They're going to make the play, and there's one out. Dillander is going to be an important part of this team because, again, Tennessee never truly going to be out of many games with their offense. But Tony Vitello said Frank Anderson, his pitching coach, turned him into a pitcher. That metamorphosis from just a thrower or an arm into a pitcher. So he works to Harrison Cayley, the catcher. Always typical of a, a young pitcher that you know, most of these guys pitching high school have great arms. They're, they're typically blowing guys away most of the, most of the order. You know, they may face one or two hitters in a high school lineup they're going to play at the next level. And you tend to rely on that uh, arm strength to get you through. And you don't become a pitcher until you have to in, in most instances. And this is where uh, Frank Anderson has done wonders with numerous pitching staffs over the years. Just really developing young pitchers. And instead of making them, uh, you know, let them be, stay as throwers, he wants them to learn how important the off-speed stuff is, how important the command is. That's on the ground off the glove of Dolan towards Ortega. Goes with a bare hand, makes a nice play to retire Kaley. Yeah, the old one, four to three play, right? Yeah, good job by Dolander just get a glove on it. Kind of slowed it down enough, and then great barehanded play by Ortega. I think if Ortega tries to glove that ball, he doesn't get the out. I would agree. 
Martin's Pineda hit by a pitch to lead off the game. Stole two bases. Two of the six the Bears had of the inning. And with score run. I want to go back to your comment. Or Pineda way late on that swing. I think that's a great way to put it. You don't become a pitcher until you have to. I mean, if you can get by just throwing the ball past hitters, there's no need for that evolution. That's right. You've got to be challenged. And that's uh, one of the things you look at as you make those next steps in your career. You know, you invite those challenges because that's what makes you better. That's why when a lot of these high school players that play select baseball, you go to play these select tournaments because now you're facing teams of all-stars. That's going to make you better. We have a fundraising goal this weekend for the Shriners Children's College Classic. We're up to 40% of that goal. You can participate. Help out at collegeclassic.org. Pineda waves and missiles. But after a 40-pitch first inning, Dolander would really love a quick one in the second. Double to ground ball outs facing Pineda, the leadoff hitter for the second time. Baylor again a 2-1 winner yesterday over UCLA, while Tennessee lost to Texas 7-2. Live fastball, 94 on that pitch. He's been between 93-95 on the gun. Way inside low, the count's gone full. And the changeup and slider had been good pitches. He's had a, a number of swing and misses on those pitches, but it's the command of his off speed stuff that's really going to make him more of a complete pitcher. Payoff is serve found again. The Bears have done a great job today spoiling several pitches from Bill Lander. And what you like so far, Britt, is you like the response. Dolander had a really tough first inning. He's come back here and retired the first two hitters. Of course, gives up the walk to Pineda, but you, you like to see that response just in terms of the moxie and the makeup of a player. What, what do they do after adversity hits him in the face? There's no doubt. And now what I'm curious to see is if the Bears might try and run again. I mentioned Pineda had a couple of stolen bases in the first. They had six. And just to see if... Bill is going to make any adjustment whatsoever on either that slide step or maybe more throws over the first. Well, I think Bill Lander's showing you he's not comfortable going in a slide step, and so he's going to continue with that leg kick, and I think Baylor's going to have to make that decision. Do we continue to run and test him? And I think the answer to that is gotta be yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's no need to stop if he's unable to make that slide step. And part of that may be now more throws to first to try and wear out Pineda. Well, Trey Richardson is in the box. I know Steve Rodriguez is thinking the same thing. Let's get Pineda in scoring position and see if Richardson can get a pitch he can handle. Good throw might have had Pineda. Just a terrible throw from Dolander to Lipsius. I'm guessing Pineda was leaning and ready to take sure off. Sure was. <laughs> it was definitely a step towards second base. And oftentimes you'll see uh, pitchers with, with not a very good move to first or if they're slower to the plate. And you'll see pitching coaches teach that little balk move to get that little slight lift of the front leg. That heel comes up and then they spin and throw. Haven't seen that yet from Dolander, but. Crowd back our, over our heads. So you're saying you can teach a fake balk move? <laughs> yeah, you teach the fake balk move, right? Yep. Well, you got to teach also you know, just changing your looks. That's what we call it. When you come up and you hold the ball, you pause, and you come up and like that last pitch, Dolander came with a quick set and went home. That's uh, you got to incorporate all of that as a, especially as a right-handed pitcher trying to hold runners at first. You get to that easy rhythm and good base runners just pick up on that and they'll take off. So in other words, with your fake balk move, if a hitter's focused in on that front foot, of the pitcher. Once he sees that raise in the air, he might take off and only instead the pitcher's well, it's pivoting usually, and turning and throwing yeah, it's the first. Usually the kick of the heel. Yeah, it's that slight turn with that knee and the, and the heel comes up slightly, then you spin and throw. Pineda runs here. 
picked a breaking ball, so that is the seventh stolen base for Baylor and the third for Pineda in the game. Might be a little more of a cat and mouse game now with throws to first and such, but the results have been the same for the Bears, just taking these extra bases. I wonder if you start to wonder, too, if uh, Baylor is picking up signs. and I mean, they've, they've picked a number of breaking yes, pitches to run on, and so you often teach your base runners to get a peak lead. You know, even from first base, you get your lead, you look in, you try to pick up the sign. You see breaking ball flashed, you're off and running. One and one the count to Richardson. Do you think the wheels are in motion of the volunteers as far as maybe just seeing if they can pick up some signals from Russell at the edge of their dugout? If, if maybe he's not closed enough and a runner at first base can pick up that sign? That's always the concern when you're flashing signs in is you got to squeeze those legs as a catcher, try to keep it hidden as best you can. Even then, some of those good base runners can still pick it. Richardson will wave and miss. Chase the slider to end the inning. So the Bears get a base runner, but they do not score. Inning and a half complete in game two. Tied to four. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. Watch me roam, discover, explore. I feel pretty. I must be a star. They helped me come a long way. I'll show you how far. Watch me. For 100 years, we've watched in awe as our commitment to transformative care continues to bring positive change to kids everywhere. Today, our brand is evolving too. Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Here I stand on my own two feet. Jump shot intact, here to compete. Skilled hands were there to mend the bone from loving halls that brought me home. My world stopped with a drive through the lane. Now give me the ball. You'll remember my name. Watch me. Orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. In the last year, there was a victim of identity theft every three seconds. Could it happen to you? Somebody used my identification and they had actually purchased the car and drove it off the lot. I didn't know what to do, but thankfully I had LifeLock. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats, and if there's a problem, we work to fix it. LifeLock provides the type of protection I need. Help protect what's yours with LifeLock Identity Theft Protection. Call right now. Tours at Minute Maid Park are available now. Come see the ballpark, get a behind-the-scenes look at the ins and outs of the stadium. From the dugout and press box to the warning track and manual scoreboard, we guarantee you've never seen Minute Maid Park like this. Book the tour today at astros.com slash tours. Here's Christian Scott. Rolls one on the ground to Richardson. Second play he's made today. He throws out the volunteer left fielder in the first pitch in the bottom of the second. Trey Richardson awfully smooth at second base. Just great hands and great footwork. It's a good side of a Steve Rodriguez coach team. Of course, a great infielder himself. Well done. One pitch, one out for Jake Jackson. Nine-hole hitter. Shortstop Cortland Lawson, the batter. Just a quick contrast for you, Brett. So... Baylor does not have a hitter in their lineup batting over 300 coming into today. Tennessee has one hitter in their lineup batting below 300 today. Mm. <laughs> and that was Christian Scott, who's had very limited action. Obviously, some of these numbers for Tennessee are going to come down. Not everybody's going to be hitting 480 or 471. But I don't expect a huge drop off as far as what they can do some weekends. They're going to get a hold of some teams, maybe not always in conference play. They're going to put up some pretty gaudy offensive numbers because of the depth of this lineup. Yeah, I think that's the key, the depth. You know, there's uh, quite a few options for Tony Vitello, and it's almost plug and play in terms of the platoon system, too. Today you're seeing Christian Scott in the lineup, and uh, 
you know, there's a couple of players that have, uh, you know, really not had a chance to get in just because of the hot start of some of these guys that he's been counting on, Vitello. So it's tough when you uh, come to a team that's just loaded like this, but certainly a lot of experience. You look up and down the lineup, you've got, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, junior, senior, 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 senior in your lineup. That's an old team. Old teams typically win in college baseball. I think you're right. You know, and Tony Vitello can recruit. When I got to Arkansas in 2017, 2018, a lot of their core players for a team that almost won the national championship were recruited by Tony V. He went to Tennessee, was able to recruit, maybe selling a vision. Now he's selling a College World Series yeah. type program. <laughs> They've executed now. Yeah, he's selling, a, he's selling the brand. Hey, we've been there, done that, boys. Dickey will send one fair into the right field corner. It's going to hit that short fence. And kick out to Nevin. Lost to the hole to third. Another double. The throw gets away. Here comes Lawson home to score. At one point, down four runs. Tennessee now has the lead. What happened on the relay throw that came so wild in the direction of the plate when the runners had stopped? Yeah, total miscommunication between Kyle Nevin throwing the ball in and Chase Westner at first base. Westner looked like could have cut the ball off and instead let it go through. And I think it just took Baylor catcher Kaylee by surprise. And, uh, well struck there off the bat of Jared Dickey. Clean double down the line. Westner not able to get to it. And here comes a throw from Kyle Nevin and just a miscommunication between catcher and first baseman. It was an easy read and no chance whatsoever for a play at the plate. And here's Ortega. He doubled in a run back in the first when Tennessee put four on the board. There's no doubt that, you know, Tony Vitello can recruit. And again, you think of some of the players He's going to continue to bring into Tennessee. And now that we are in this era of grad transfers or other transfers, there could be a lot of very good mid-major players that will say to themselves, I'd love to play for the Volunteers. And we know what they've done from a standpoint, Pat, of selling basically all the seats they have in that smaller stadium. They need a bigger stadium or more add-ons. Their basketball team today played in front of 21,678 defeated Arkansas so they were 16 to no at home so they like wow. playing in front of a lot of fans and, and if you could find a way to get even more seats at Lindsey Nelson Stadium fans will show up well when you win that solves a lot of problems yes. right it, uh, you, it helps it, it, yeah, alumni <laughs> tends to start donate more money uh, the fundraising component uh, you know you you think about college baseball and when you hire a head coach it's not just about the X's and O's and how well can they coach on the field it's how they handle the off the field stuff and that's really relationship with donors and you know, in, in Tony Vitello's case it's how do you expand the stadium well you got to have money to do that so it's uh, a lot of different things you think of a head coach as a CEO they're in charge of so many different things with in regards to the program he's done an incredible job three balls and a strike to Ortega big rip and a miss and a lot of times we think about all the games that are on television during the regular season for me it's what these venues look like when you're hosting a regional hosting a super and you're just seeing the incredible fan support that just makes it a compelling place to be going forward for years to come. That's exactly right. And you've talked about it, Brett. You're an SEC guy. You know, you talk about the, the eyeballs that are on an SEC baseball program. And certainly Tennessee is getting a lot more attention with the success that uh, Vitello and the Vols have had here these past couple of seasons. Ortega didn't want to do that. Pops it up to Richardson. So Dickey unable to score. Now there's two outs in the inning. It'll be huge for Jake Jackson and the Bears to get out of this with just one run. But a miscommunication play won't go down as an error, but certainly a mental error. They created the uh, one-run lead and put Jared Dickey at third base. I almost think it has to. Got to account for that extra base, right? For Lawson scoring. Otherwise, those guys were holding on a, on a throw in. Yeah, you're right. They did put an error on the board, so it has to be on the throw. Unfortunate, nonetheless, for Baylor because if they get that pop-up right there to Richardson, they're a little step closer towards getting out of this inning. Yeah, without a run. To, uh... Jordan Beck, the batter. Back on low. 
Reynolds, right center. McKenzie turning and running. Will he have enough room? Wow. A couple of strides in front of the bullpen. He'll track it down. Nice catch. And Beck comes up empty again. Second day in a row. He has been robbed on a ball deep to center field. But Beck and the Volunteers go ahead with the Bears 5-4. Excitement, the emotion, the passion. Only on H Town High School Sports with Todd Free. See it right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Barucci has teamed up with Shriners Children's to provide fans with a fully customized official college classic souvenir bat. Fans who donate $100 or more receive a free bat from Marucci. Donations of $250 or more earn a free full-size bat engraved with their own name. So visit collegeclassic.org today to make a donation and receive your free Marucci baseball bat. Going to bring you up to the booth. We have Mel Bauer, the chief marketing officer of Shriners here. Mel, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Tell me what's your... Here favorite part of the weekend is? Well, I think it's seeing our patients engage with the teams and have such a great experience and for the teams to do such a great job of just making them feel extra special. That never gets old, does it? Never, ever. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, big weekend, Mel. It's uh, always great to be here for Shriners, but especially this atmosphere of the environment. Tonight's going to be just absolutely electric. What's, uh, what's your favorite part of the weekend? So overall, I think just seeing so many different people being able to be exposed to our story and our mission and so we're always wanting to make sure that as many people as possible know about our story and so this is just another way in which we can get in front of a, a bunch more people and so that makes it really great for us this is a marketing guy's dream isn't it? It, it in fact <laughs> is and so we we love new people hearing our story so that that's great i would imagine mel there's multi facets to that story uh, of Shriners as McKenzie fouls one back. We're on television talking to the masses, so to speak, and spreading the word in stadium and at television, but a lot of your representatives, some of the Shriners who are downstairs yourself, have a chance almost to interact one-on-one -on -one with some curious fans and share your story to them as well. Absolutely, and so it, it's just a very engaging event. Uh, people love college baseball. Um, there's a strong following, obviously evidenced by the people that are here this weekend that are watching. Um, as well, and so any time that yeah we have the ability to to interact with, with folks that are engaged, um, it's another opportunity for us to tell our story. Well, Mel, it, it's I mean Shriners does such a great job with sports overall. You've got all these different events, and tell us what uh, the connection with sports does for Shriners. So sports is a great storytelling avenue for us because sports is in and of itself. Every time there's a game, a match, it, it's a story. And so our patients really identify with that because you're usually trying to do the very best that you can to get the desired outcome. Our patients are doing the same thing each and every day. They're working to overcome some of their medical challenges so they can live their best life. And so the idea that, that sports is about celebrating hard work and, and winners, um, every one of our patients is a winner because of what they go through. And so it's just a great parallel for us. Kyle Nevin grounds out to short, so now there's two gone. We saw the fundraising goal at 40%. And Mel, we're inching that up at uh, 40. We started at 10. We got to 20. 
Obviously, fans can participate at collegeclassic.org, and we want to see this number continue to grow. Yeah, we're excited. We think we're going to get there. We think we're actually going to surpass it. And so as the weekend goes on and there's more fans that are able to be engaged now that we're into the weekend, yeah, we're really confident we're going to surpass that goal. And we're really appreciative of everyone who's supporting us. Let's do that tonight if there's 25,000 in the spot. Absolutely. Let's knock it out. <laughs> Well, uh, we don't do past the hat because you could definitely do that as a Shriner, right? <laughs> right, exactly. We have some hats that we could, <laughs> we could volunteer for that effort. Well, I did see some money jars down there, and those were getting filled up. I love the challenge with each team, and uh, I think uh, a lot of the fans take that uh, little bit of pride making their team. Yeah, the, there's a the lot winner. of ways to support. Yeah. Through the, the challenge, I mean, we've got merchandise sales, all of that goes to support Shriner's children, so there's a lot of ways that fans can get engaged. It's been a quick inning so far. Antonio Valdez batting with the bases empty and two out. Mel, tell us where you're from, where you live. So I live in Tampa, Florida, which is the international headquarters for Tampa, or uh, Florida Shriners. And I understand you're not just the chief marketing officer, you were a patient as well? In fact, yes, I was treated at our St. Louis facility um, many, 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 many years ago. Um, but yeah, that, my Shriners story started when I was actually 18 months wow. old. So your story with Shriners has been a big part of your life and hasn't changed from, from that point. Absolutely. It's, it's always been um, a part of me, and uh, I, was, I was raised by my parents to have a continual thankfulness to Shriners for all that they've done for me. And when an opportunity came to serve the organization, I, I, I absolutely jumped at it. Now you're able to give back to it. Hopefully every day. That's, that's <laughs> the goal. Mel Bauer joining us up in the booth here in the third inning of the middle game of this uh, college classic that went in the left field corner it's a foul ball I know we look forward to this event certainly every year but I, I think there are a couple of years where you get a field where you get the Baylors or the Tennessees or Texas or LSU or UCLA and Oklahoma and you just bring in some fans that maybe haven't been here for a couple of years that's right and our story is always evolving I mean a couple of years ago it was the Shriners Hospitals for Children College that Classic was and now it's the Shriners <laughs> Children's College Classic. So, yeah, every time that, that fans either come back or are new, our, our story continues to evolve, especially as we go into our next 100 years as we celebrate our 100th anniversary this year. That's a nice big round number to celebrate. We're extremely excited, but we're more excited <laughs> about the next 100 because we, we really feel like we're just getting started yeah. in terms of what our mission is going to do for kids in the future. We've got this marketing stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> it's a roller up the middle. Backhanded by Ortega. Oh. And complete the play at first. No, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for Thank what you. you do for Shriners. We look forward to the rest of the weekend. Very good. Thank you. We'll step out. Tennessee. Up by everybody. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans. To cheer and clap. Two different legs. That's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long. You'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me roam. Discover. Explore. The forest is quiet. The river will roar. One slip by the fire is all it took. But they made my arm better. Just take a look. Under moon and stars. That's where I love to stay. Let's go play in the woods. I'll show you the way. Watch me. The place to turn for any bird. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. season is around the corner so to secure your spot to watch the Astros with a partial plan we encourage you to get on the horn this weekend whether you want to see every series or be at the ballpark over the course of the year there's a perfect plan for you visit astros.com slash ticket plans to learn more we go to the bottom of the third inning Tennessee with a 5-4 lead. At one point, Baylor jumped out of the gates with four in the top of the first. Volunteers answered with four of their own, and 
Pushed across the run. Unearned last inning. Here's Drew Gilbert. Single to the run back in the first inning. Tennessee, a college World Series team a year ago, the first time they were in Omaha since 2005. I think, I think 2020 was shaping up to be a huge year for Tennessee, the year that got wiped away. And that's just trying to build and continue to get this program even better. That ball's whipped to right by Gilbert. Having a guy like Gilbert in the middle of their lineup does not hurt. That <laughs> sure doesn't. 14 for 27, so he's above the 500 mark three weeks into the campaign. The yeah, outstanding start to his season, and you see the build, you see the, the physicality, the, the athleticism he brings to the game, and well, just a really tough out. He competes so well in the box. Jackson's tried to get him out, fastball away, fastball in. Gilbert's delivered both times with singles. Here's Lipscomb. He had a long sack fly in the first. This thing's up there in the rafters. Who wants it? It'll be the center fielder, McKenzie. He made the call. Gonzalez peeled off, and McKenzie's been busy today. He'll make the catch. Well, a lot of whip in that swing from Lipscomb. And it's uh, one of those uh, players that you, every time he steps in the box, you kind of hold your breath, thinking, <laughs> where's this ball going to come down? That time, Jack's able to keep it in the park. Well, so he's in favor of swinging. He's walked just one time this year. <laughs> he's going to swing it. <laughs> he's up there ready to hack early. And usually really make counts. contact, yeah. I don't think you find much fault with those numbers when you're getting enough hits where your on-base percentage is still good. It's when guys are maybe struggling a bit with the bat that you want to augment those numbers with some free bases to get on with some base on balls or work counts to your favor. Yeah, you love the aggression if it's uh, if, if it's in the attack zone, right? You, you try to tell hitters, you know, we want you to stay aggressive when you get the pitch you're looking for, you get the pitch in the zone that you're sitting on, but uh, it's when you start to get loose with that approach is where it gets hurt, especially with aggressive hitters. If they're swinging pitches out of the strike zone, that's when typically the great coach is going to step in and say, hey, you got to tighten that up a bit. Make sure we're getting better pitches to swing at. I would say a guy like Gilbert or Lipscomb, teams might want to pitch around. In other words, they might say, well, we're not going to give them anything to pitch. If we end up walking them, so be it. We're going to see if they chase. But you get back to the depth of this lineup. Yeah, yeah, base runners are poison, truly man. the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. There's not, uh, you do typically go into a game plan saying late in the game, you know, game on the line. If this guy's up, we have ability to pitch around him. We're going to do that. But, uh, yeah, with this Tennessee lineup, it's, uh, okay, so you pitch around Lipscomb, then, then what do you got? Well, you, you got Ortega. <laughs> you, you got you got Lipsius. I mean, it's just, you know, one great hitter after another. And then you get back to what we mentioned last night. When you're in the SEC, it's possible to string together hits, but you're facing Friday night pitchers. It doesn't matter if it's a top team or a bottom-tier team. They're going to have a good arm on Friday. May have a good starter on Saturday. Certainly a pitcher out of the back of the bullpen that can do some damage. As Gilbert draws a throw. But in those tight conference games, stringing together four, five, six hits to score three runs in an inning, not always possible. Yeah, you get a couple of guys happen. on base yeah. and rip one out of the yard, you put three on the board in one swing. That's where those crooked numbers come from. A good change up there from Jackson. And listen, I'm an old man and I bat right-handed. There's times when I watch games at Tennessee, I like to jump up there, put a helmet on, see if I can swing left-handed because you elevate. <laughs> You're going to celebrate. You're going to get some balls shooting out of those gaps. It has a cozy feel to it. I would imagine there's some games at Baylor that wind's blowing off the river and you're thinking, I've got to hit it twice to get it out. Oh, man. You don't have that concern very often well, in just, Knoxville. Yeah, you got to wait till about mid-March and late March when that southern wind starts to come into the, into the Baylor ballpark, and that's when things usually get more offensive. Well, just a great testament to the pitching staff from University of Texas last night to shut this lineup down the way they did, holding Tennessee to two runs. 
Two balls, two strikes to Lipsius. And that pitch comes a little bit in. Texas did run off five different pitchers, including their Friday night starter, and they're closer to start and finish off the win against Tennessee. LSU and Texas will be the finale tonight. And we might have a record crowd here at Minimaid. So it'll be a great opportunity to showcase college baseball across the country on AT&T Sportsnet on the MLB Network. As Lipsius takes a walk. Yeah, the only issue with the uh, Texas staff last night, just David Pierce choosing to use Aaron Nixon for a couple of innings. He threw 32 pitches to close that game out. Of course, you always want to get that first win. And uh, that 72 lead certainly not feeling comfortable for the Longhorns against that Tennessee lineup. So see if Nixon, if needed, can come back tonight. That's, that's a question mark. Yeah, that's a good strategy aspect. And that's where this event starts to feel a little bit like a region. Because you obviously want to start accumulating wins, but you know the competition isn't going to get any easier the next game the next day. That's right. Yeah, so the balance of how you use your pen in these three days is uh, really critical. Evan Russell homer last night. There's a snap throw down the first. Close and safe. Lipsy is able to get back in under the tag of Wesner. Oh, a nice snap throw from Baylor catcher Harrison Cayley. Just a tick late on Lipsius. You can see Lipsius kind of stumbled a little bit getting back. I don't know if he lost his footing, but Chase Wessner with the quick tag, not early enough. Good look at Kaylee. You mentioned he replaced Andy Thomas. Good catcher for the Baylor Bears last year. That one's ripped to left. Evan Russell hits one high off the bricks. A little bit of a traffic jam. Gilbert will score. Lipsius right behind him. They'll both score. A ringing two-run double from Evan Russell. He just missed a homer. It's now a 7-4. Bears lead seven unanswered runs by Tennessee. And you're right. Evan Russell puts a blast into this one. And you can see high off the facade there, right above the Baylor bullpen. Right by the time Jared McKenzie, the center fielder, corralled it. Luke Lipsius had made the turn at second. Great base running by him. He had to hold up for just a moment. But then put on the Jets, was able to score all the way from first base. And Evan Russell with the two RBI double. It's a decision to make there as far as sending runners once that ball hit off the bricks and propelled back into the field of play. Here's Christian Scott to wave and miss. Off the bat, it looked like that might be a home run, but you know with those pillars and that high brick fence that you can see some balls stay in play, and then once they hit the bricks, God only knows which direction it heads. That's right. We talked about the pinball, the caroms yesterday. We saw that happen uh, last night. And it's a difficult ballpark to play once it gets into that left center gap. And we had the ball hit the edge of the Crawford boxes yesterday in the air. Ricochets off the screen in front of the bullpen. Ricocheted off the pillar and back towards the Crawford box. <laughs> the Crawford box, yeah. Three different directions <laughs> on one fly ball. Oh, that was the pinball machine. That's yeah, what we talked was, about. I mean, it was crazy. Melendez got the triple, but... Yeah, that, uh, that ball Russell hit didn't miss the home run by much. It was probably maybe three or four feet below the yellow line. He pulls that ball about 15 feet to his left. It's easily a home run in Crawford. And that's seven unanswered runs now by Tennessee. Two balls and a strike to Christian Scott. He bounced out to second his only time in. And this is exactly what this Tennessee lineup does. It just puts so much pressure on a pitcher. You can see Jackson now with a pitch count up to 58. He's trying to make good pitches, but you just can't catch too much of the plate with this lineup. And that pressure is constant. It's almost never-ending, especially once they get guys on base. Scott lifts one to left. Does he have enough? Towards the Crawford boxes. Goodbye. Christian Scott pumping his fists after his third home run of the season. And the Tennessee Volunteers have scored nine unanswered runs. Just a really impressive swing by Christian Scott. Stay back on that delivery that was uh, 
like a backdoor slider is what uh, Jackson was trying to throw, and it came back over the fat part of the plate. Christian Scott just puts a tremendous swing on it. And that's definitely a Crawford box home run, but a home run nonetheless. Gonzalez, the left fielder, was back there. He started sprinting towards the infield just in case that would carry him high off the fence and he could play it back in. There's quite a few home runs, and that might be one of them that in other big league ballparks might be caught by a left fielder with room to spare. Might be a fly out to left, but, uh, you know, when you play in this ballpark and you can take advantage by going opposite field like Christian Scott did. And if he's sitting on that pitch away, just stays behind it nice. Boy, what a great swing. Stays compact. Watch Gonzalez. Watch him race back towards the infield, hoping that that might hit that United Airlines concrete area and propel towards him. And it's a nice short stroke. Give it a pitch away when you can keep your your hands in close to your body and just then extend and get to that ball away. That's just a beautiful swing by Scott. It's well placed for a strike on the outside corner to Cortland Lawson who walked and scored last inning. That was the run that put Tennessee in front 5-4. Tapped on four more runs here in the third and not done. Only one gone. And the top of the lineup looming on deck. There's a ground ball to short. Pineda's got it. Hurry that throw, and it's in time to retire Lawson for the second out. And Lawson gets out of the box really well and made that play a bang bang. Pretty routine ground ball to shortstop. You see that kind of hustle. And our coach Steve Rodriguez out of the dugout for Baylor. This may be it for Jake Jackson. Tough start for him. He's up to nine runs on eight hits. It's this Tennessee volunteer lineup. Pitching change here at Minime. I'll tell you about the new pitcher after this. What if your resume was more than a resume? What if it could adapt and improve? What if it opened doors you didn't know existed? Created opportunities that let you be seen, heard, even help get your foot in the door. I got it. An Indeed resume never stops working for you. Starter Jake Jackson out after two and two thirds innings of work, and Kobe Andrade is on out of the bullpen. Andrade, you see the stats there in the season. A transfer from Texas A&M comes in as a two-way player for Baylor. He's played some left field, has a few at bats in the season as well, but to a good start of the mound. Upper 80s fastball, curveball changeup. Going to face Jared Dickey, who keeps on swinging. Blisters one to left, and after two doubles, he's finally retired on a liner to the left fielder Gonzalez. And the inning ends. Another four run frame for the Tennessee Volunteers. Nine and answered for the balls. Big home run this inning from Christian Scott. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. Morning already?
Taco Bell's toasted breakfast burritos will get you out of bed. With fluffy eggs, crispy bacon, and a melted three cheese blend, all toasted to morning perfection. You're not dreaming, they're real. Only at Taco Bell. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat, and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting astros.com slash buddies. Big Moments. The best fans feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. A lot of action through three innings. It's a 9-4 Tennessee lead. Volunteers have gone to the bullpen. Kirby Connell, left-hander, on to replace the starter, Chase Dolan. Yeah, she numbers good start to the year for Connell, and really tough on left-handers. Fastball upper 80s, curveball changeup. Really fills up the zone with that three-pitch mix. And Vitello and Anderson just love. Kirby Connell. He can stretch out a game. He can piggyback starters. Go late. Be used as a specialist against lefties. And this timing and relief of Chase Dolander. We'll see if Kirby Connell can extend this outing against first, the Baylor Bears. First batter he will face is Chase Wesner. And a sacrifice fly back in that four run first. Certainly a tremendous beginning for Baylor. Dolander give up just two hits, four runs. Done after three. And then Tennessee has run off nine straight runs since. That should be a foul ball after it came up. I think it hit Wesner on the bounce. Oh. You know that stat line with Connell six strikeouts, no walks. And only one hit given up in four and two thirds. So opponents hitting only 071 against him. Blacksburg, South Carolina native. This is 2 2. Yeah. Wave it to us. Now, now, strikes out the first man he faces. Looks like a left handed Kenny Powers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Get that late sharp break. How about that uh, handlebar mustache he's sporting? It's almost Raleigh esque. <laughs> yeah, just nice snap on that breaking ball. Not a ton of depth to it, but it's just late. Has he got that mustache waxed up? Oh, yeah. My goodness. That's some time invested in that stash. Esteban Cordoza Okendo, the batter. I mean, you don't roll out of the rack and have it look like that. You've got to <laughs> do some daily maintenance. Well manicured. Pitches half as good as that stash looks. He's going to be in good shape today. Showing a lot of movement on his pitchers early, yeah. isn't he? Arm side running the fastball and late break. That ball catches his foot. Wow. You can hear the thud. Yeah. Watch him bounce nice up recovery. and make the play and get the out. Look at that big puma bouncing off that mound. <laughs> Man, Kirby Connell takes one off the foot and says, I'll take it myself. Thank you very much, Evan Russell. <laughs> ball struck well off the bat of Cardoza Kendo and now with the quick recovery didn't phase him in the least might have a split second of shell shock after you take this line and let's see if it hit him at the bottom of the foot still hey, not trying sure. to leap out of the way and if he does that it's probably a base hit and that uh, fires up your defense strike out and a hard comebacker here's alex gonzalez this is the portion of the game where if these relievers give tennessee a boost and some quick innings then their offense can use this opportunity to try and pull away. Yeah. 
And that's what uh, Tony Vitello was talking about. You know, you just get some guys to fill in some roles here early on the season with this pitching staff and let this offense work for you. And that's why you're going to see Tennessee off to the great start they are. But, but, you know, leading into conference play will give him and his coaching staff a ton of confidence with these uh, pitchers filling in some roles. I like it. I like it. Just misses with the changeup. Not by much. Gonzalez grounded out to third is only time in. It'll be fouled down the line and right. Off the bat of Baylor left fielder. Baylor won the lower scoring game 2-1 to one yesterday against UCLA. They're going to need to score some runs today if they're to get their second straight win. Yeah! Rip and miss. That was an eight-pitch inning for Connell. A couple of strikeouts, handled the comebacker. Trying to move this game along. 9-4, hockey top. I'm Matt Adams, host of the Fairways of Life show, and you can catch us every week right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Long-form interviews with legends of the game and today's stars. If it happens in golf, we'll take you inside of the ropes right here on the Fairways of Life show. Six remarkable kids have each teamed up with the participating university for the Shriners Children's College Classic Team Fundraising Challenge. All weekend long, teams will compete to see which fan base could raise the most money in support, of course, of Shriners Children's. So go online to collegeclassic.org to donate in honor of your favorite team today. Nine four, Tennessee in front as the balls get ready to bat. In the bottom of the fourth inning, Hart to the lineup, Ortega, Beck, and Gilbert. Ortega tries to bunt. Fouls one back. Try and catch somebody napping. It goes like Kendall back behind the back for Baylor. So Ortega takes a peek. And you don't mind that up nine to four. It's still early in the game. It's still fourth inning, so. Let's see, looking to add to this lead. Kobe Andrade out for his second inning of work. One pitch, one out in the third. He was economical. We'll see how long he can go <laughs> in this game. Might be called upon to provide some strong middle relief. Well, coming to a game down four or five runs and that's exactly the mindset, Brett. Just keep your team in the game long enough. Try to get that offense. Give you a shot to get back in it. On the ground to third. Cordozo Akendo makes the play. And there's one quick out. So far, so good for Andrade. And look at Jordan back. Beck single has scored in that four run first. Tennessee was able to answer the four runs Baylor scored in the top. 
Beck flew out to rather deep center to end the second. Hey, he's got a couple of hits and five at bats, but every out has been loud. Speaking of loud, that one shot to the bullpen, but it's going to be caught. Nevin got back there right in front of the warning track, playing somewhat deep to begin with, and he was there waiting for that liner for the second out. Another loud one that uh, results in a quick turn to the dugout for Jordan Beck. Yeah, Beck just continues to put the barrel on the baseball. And, you know, has the two hits to show for it, but uh, easily could be six for six, not two for six. Drew Gilbert has a pair of hits. Scored a couple of runs as well, so he's 14 for 27. Look up on the scoreboard this late in the year, and your average is 519. But he'll roll one to short, and Yate is there, and the Volunteers hit a couple of balls hard, but have nothing to show for it. Andrade with a good job, the perfect inning. Sends this game to the fifth. Watch me. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. An open floor of inspiration. This is my place. Five positions to start, leotard and tights. A story through movement, under music and lights. Straight and tall, they promised I'd stand. I'm a ballerina who twirls like the blades of a fan. Watch me. Innovative scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by Marucci, the number one bat in the big leagues. Game moves into the fifth inning, 9-4, Tennessee in front. Tennessee made a couple of defensive changes. Yeah, I kind of wondered, uh, Brett, when Gilbert got out of the box, he pulled up a bit. I wonder if that was uh, maybe a pull of a hamstring or a calf muscle, but uh, couldn't make it to first base. And so now we see a defensive replacement for Drew Gilbert in center. Kyle Booker, the new center fielder. That's a big bat for Tennessee. And they're going to hope that Drew Gilbert's okay. Harrison Cayley, the catcher, in the nine spot, leads off this fifth inning. You know, sometimes you see a player slip out of the box and then maybe not uh, completely run it out, but that's uh, very uncharacteristic of a Drew Gilbert not running the play out. And I think that goes back to maybe pulling something in one of his legs, and it would be a big loss here for Tennessee. When they claim you're a Lenny Dykstra-type player, you're a psycho 100% of every play. When you don't go 100%, there's usually something wrong. Yeah, that's exactly right. He's not one to uh, to not hustle. Kirby Connell gets the soft foul ball. On the count, one ball, two strikes to Harrison Cayley. Out of the Woodlands, Houston area. And a transfer from Abilene Christian. It's a funny spin after his top foul left the plate. That's Gilbert coming out of the box. Yeah, you can see the grimace. Yeah, something definitely happened that first step out of the box. Kirby Connell enjoys fielding his position. He handles that comeback. Had one last inning that smashed off his shoe. Made that play standing up. 
but a quick out in the fifth inning. You know, you think of a pitcher's follow through, you, you try to teach to you put yourself into a good position to, to be a fielder after you make the pitch. See some pitchers struggle doing that. They'll turn their body ever so slightly one way or the other. Don't finish squared up to the plate. That's uh, when you put yourself at a bit of risk. It's Jack Vignetta. Is it the line drive at your kneecap or at your foot that's a little bit harder to get down and extend for? That's uh, definitely it. Would especially especially when those you know balls come off these bats at 100 miles an hour yes. plus. If you've uh, pitched long enough, you've been hit somewhere on your body. I took one off the wrist. I'm taking him off the leg. Pineda shoots one out to left center field. This ball starting to carry. It's down. It's going to take a bounce up off the bullpen. Pineda's been on base all three times. That's his first hit. A nice job. Takes the outside fastball delivered from Connell and delivers it at left center gap. That's what uh, the MO on Pineda is. He'll spray the ball around and really kind of a gap to gap type hitters. Add a little bit more pop this year. To his swing. Right, living up to that billing. Trey Richardson steps in. They're just trying to find a little bit of offense after they. Swipe six bases to score four runs in the top of the first. Haven't scored since. Well, Richardson, one of uh, three Baylor Bears with home runs. Power from this Baylor lineup is definitely down so far this season. We talked about Richardson not playing summer ball. He stayed on campus, hit the weight room, tried to get bigger and stronger. And I think you're starting to see a few more top tier players do that. Normally you think about where are you going to go in the summer? You're going to go to the Cape, the Northwoods League. Where else can you play? Canada is going to be out at third base. He tried to get his fourth stolen base in the game. And that was a call by James Ainsworth at third, third base umpire, and quickly, Steve Rodriguez out of the Baylor dugout wants that play reviewed. And he wasted no time, and Mike Taylor's third base coach immediately looked in and took Baylor about half a second to figure out they're gonna challenge that, that catch and throw. Nice job by Evan Russell behind the bit, dish, got rid of the ball quick. There's the tag by Trey Lipscomb. Gonna slow it down, back it up. Throws a little bit high to make this tag attempt tough. Yeah, looks like he got in there. I have to say you're probably right. We've had so many of these where you start to anticipate what you think the call is gonna be, and then you watch this hand from Pineda. Can he get it in there? It's close. Is that tag on the shoulder at that point? Yeah, you can't see from that angle. You almost have to see a third base camera or center field camera to see where that tag was in relation to Pineda's hand. This is, I think, the one thing that's tough for us to do that you see at the NFL where you can combine shots. In other words, you can look at that shot, then you can play the extended clip to see if the tag is swiped down or whether it's already on the shoulder. It's hard to piece different angles together to get the picture of what took place. That's exactly right. And of course, in baseball, you've got so many different angles uh, that come into play here. You, know, you don't have an angle that uh, gets it, you know, the runners going into the bag there. You know, that uh, deep third base camera, well, it's, it's really tough to see. Pirates getting ready to make the call. Ball's going to stand. In case where it almost looked like he was safe, but you couldn't quite overruled it based on what we had to look at. Yeah, we've seen that a couple of times in this tournament already. It's It appears, even in slow motion, to be a call that could be reversed. If there's not, you know, overwhelming video evidence, then umpires are going to stick with their call. Counts two and one to Richardson. 
Going to chop one to third. Lipscomb there gets the nice big bounce. And the inning will end, so that caught stealing. Took a little steam out of the Baylor fifth. Halfway done in game two today. Five run lead for Tennessee. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. Today we welcomed Shriners patient Christian to Baylor Ballpark to be a part of our team. It's important when you have an opportunity to meet a young man or a young woman who has gone through some challenges in their life. You realize how special it is and we're able to make their day a little bit brighter, make it a little bit better. In March to April of 2021, Christian was diagnosed with leg calf perthes disease. I'd have to carry him everywhere. Uh, I was telling a friend of mine who's a Shriner of the trouble we were having. Two weeks later, we were there. The Shiners really jumped in and gave us a lot of hope. He will need to have hip replacement, but we're trying to get that healed now. You meet these kids and you realize that they're just like you, and they deserve a normal life and that chance to succeed, and Shriners giving them that ability, regardless of whether they can afford it or not, that's huge, and we had Christian out of the field today. It's, he's a great kid, he's got a lot of energy. He's, he's out here taking some big swings, so it's definitely, it's inspiring. We were riding the go-kart. They showed me around. I hit some balls. This is my favorite team. for 2022 by checking out the Astros team store in Union Station. Stop Monday through Saturday for the latest Astros merchandise so you can visit astros.com slash team store for more information. This game headed into the bottom of the fifth inning. Volunteers up by five. Lipscomb will lead off followed by Lipsius and Russell. Andrade's going right back out there. He came on to get the final out in the third inning. And a quick fourth. Four outs on seven pitches against this lineup. Rating on the curve is an A plus plus. That's an A plus. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> you've got an outstanding job by Andrade so far. Lipscomb twice has flied out to center. He's picked up a sack fly and an RBI. Tony Vitello said they knew what they had with this guy they knew he was going to be a pretty good player COVID threw some guys back in the mix seeing backlogs at pretty much every level these players had to handle that first they had to deal with maybe not being ready this year they had to wait another year or get reduced playing time knew he was a good defender knew he could swing the bat he certainly swung it well today but he has nothing to show for it yet as he bounces out to Richardson in second and really that backlog, I don't know if there's any level of baseball in the college ranks that hasn't dealt with that on some way, shape, or form. Oh, no, I mean, you see it even at the D3 level where some players that uh, could potentially be D1 type players have gone to places where they can uh, have a chance to play. You, know, you're, you come to a program where you've got, uh, you know, fourth and fifth year seniors, in some cases, sixth year seniors, right, that are grad players now. And uh, they played the college game four or five years, but because of the COVID backup, I mean, you look at freshmen and sophomores that have to wait one, two, three years to get in the lineup. And so a lot of these players have chosen to move on to either JUCO ranks or D2, D3 programs. And so the, the level of play in college baseball as a whole has definitely gone up because of the uh, the age. I completely agree. Luke Lipsy is quickly down nothing and two, and he's going to shoot one in the right for a piece. It's a two-strike pitch that Andrade might want to have back and Lipsius gets the single if you're a young player then and you want to go and still compete and you're going to say well I'm going to go ahead and compete with these fifth or sixth year seniors then you're an 18 year old going up against 23 24 year yeah <laughs> you better be an absolute stud man and that's and that's the problem you know but I, I love what John Savage said he said look we had some big turnover yesterday in our UCLA program but we've always been committed to, to bringing in younger players and developing them. And I think if you have a, a program with that philosophy, and then you look at how they execute on that, where UCLA has 18 freshmen coming in, only one grad transfer, then you find a program that, that really does commit to development. And I think that's the key. 
And I tip my hat to teams that can do that because in part, if you're going to recruit freshmen every year and maybe pick off a selective transfer or grad transfer, but you're going to bring in the young kids and then you expect them if you're doing your job or they're doing theirs to be gone in three years. Right. Then you're also dealing with kids that you're going to go ahead and ink those letters of intent that may not make it to campus because they're that good and might get drafted. And that's the other part uh, that it's a little bit different in baseball where you have to be open to what's going to happen to your roster. You also have to look at down the road a little bit to the, the recruits that you have bringing in. And if they are that good, as uh, UCLA's recruiting class is this year, number one ranked, and you think you're going to lose maybe two or three of those guys in the draft. And in the Bruins case, only lost one. But that, for every college coach, that, that is the decisions they have to make in terms of how they disperse that scholarship money because you know how limited it is in, in the college baseball ranks. The amount of work that takes to allocate those scholarships to deal with the kids that are leaving early, those that might want to come back, you go out and sign some tremendous players and they have such good years as 16 and 17 year olds either in high school or in the summer that you lose them. I mean, it is a constant shell game <laughs> with right. moving pieces everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I talked to Chip Hale about that. who took over to Arizona, came from the major league ranks. And I asked Chip what was the most challenging part of the job now coming back to coach college baseball. And he said exactly that. He said, just try to manage the shell game in the recruiting process of, you know, your, your older players who have probably earned more scholarship money versus the younger players who you're trying to get onto your roster versus the guys who are going to the draft. He says, it's just crazy how you have to manage that system. And now, to make it a little bit more complicated, the transfer portal. Indeed. Media eligibility as well. Evan Russell flew out to right. Here's Christian Scott, who homered into the Crawford boxes. An Apple shot back in the third inning. Chip Hale, a good friend. I was with him for a couple of years at the AAA ranks before he became the manager with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And a lot of people said, well, coming from the Detroit Tigers and Big League Baseball, he needed to go out and find a good recruiting guy. So Trip Couch, who was here at the University oh, yeah. of Houston for a while and then at South Carolina, went out and joined Chip. So Chip and Trip together in Tucson. <laughs> I know those guys were watching on the MLB Network yesterday before their game. Yeah, Trip's a good man. Known him a long time. And you know, Baylor did something similar when Steve Rodriguez took over this Baylor program seven years ago, and that was to hire Mike Taylor, very well-known recruiter here in Texas. Of course, uh, many years coaching at Rice under Wayne Graham's tutelage, and so very, very well-known. And so it's, you know, it really is. It's uh, you have to hire the guys that, that understand that game. We we talked to uh, you know Jay Johnson said, hey, I I think I brought in one of the best recruiters in college baseball, in Dan Fitzgerald. Christian Scott deep to center. Just missed what would have been his second home run of the game. Wow. McKenzie's had a couple are on the ground today here at Minime. One loud out. Tennessee doesn't add to their five-run lead. Time to start eating better? If only it were that easy. Fresh and Lean thinks it is. Meals with fresh organic ingredients delivered to your door, ready to heat and eat in under three minutes. So if you're looking to eat healthier, we got you. How easy is that? Fresh and Lean. beyond the court with Rockets All Access. Your backstage pass to the team all season long with exclusive player interviews, detailed team analysis, and more. Rockets All Access. New episodes every Wednesday on AT&T Sportsnet. Five innings complete here at Minime. Taylor had an early 4-0 lead. It's now a 9-4 Tennessee advantage. 
Also, we'll have a guest up in the booth. This is Sydney. She's a national patient ambassador from Oklahoma. She's 16 years old. She's driving. Kind of feeling <laughs> the parents, if they're like me, are a little bit nervous, but welcome. Thank you. What's it been like to be here this weekend? Oh, it's been so much fun. I'm not used to watching a lot of baseball, so this has been a good experience. Connor and Seth, the other national patient ambassadors, have been helping me out a little bit, explaining the game. And so it's been cool, especially watching Oklahoma OU play. It's been, it's been fun. It's been great. Mackenzie lists one to center, and this ball should be caught at will for the first out. I would say if you're not fully up to speed on baseball, nine games and 30 hours worth will get you there at some <laughs> yes. point this weekend. Yes, it will. <laughs> Well, Cindy, tell us where you're from and how you got involved with Shriners. Yeah, so I'm from Oklahoma City. Um, I was diagnosed with scoliosis at the age of 10, and so I did multiple things to try to correct my curve. I did yoga. I did scoli um, smart exercises. I did bracing for two and a half years, which as a 10-year-old, that's kind of, you know, scary. That's and tough, it was a lot yeah. of hard work, but, um, you know, you're just kind of in the mindset to do whatever you need to do, and I'm very type A, so I just did whatever my parents <laughs> told me. I was like, sure, I'll wear it. But um, my curve continued to progress. It went from 18 to 42. And so we looked at other options. And my mom posted my story on Facebook. And a local Oakland home told us about Shriners in Philadelphia. And so um, we went. And they told us that I was um, able to have this new surgery called VBT. It wasn't FDA approved at the time. And so insurance wasn't covering it. And so Shriners oh, yeah. was able to pay for my surgery. And now wow. I'm here. <laughs> I think it's a great story, Pat, and it's one we've heard before. You know, it's somebody stepping up, yep. spreading the word, yep. finding out what can be done, and then dealing with the cost and yeah. the fact that Shriners was able to help out with that. Certainly a weight off your parents' mind, I'm sure, as, as Nevin flies out. But then just the whole story and the way it comes together is fantastic. Yeah, because you, you're already dealing with the weight of having a, a medical... Um, disadvantage and so not having to worry about paying and insurance and all that it is it's really helpful for the parents and I know my mom she did a great job of not showing it but um, I know it was difficult for her yeah <laughs> mom nod yes in the yes. background <laughs> <laughs> Valdez will hit one of the ground to short and he hit again so that was so quick that Sydney's gonna stick around with us when we come back in the bottom of the sixth inning it's a 9-4 volunteer lead Watch me pirouette with style and grace. Watch me roam, discover, explore. I feel pretty. I must be a star. They helped me come a long way. I'll show you how far. Watch me. For 100 years, we've watched in awe as our commitment to transformative care continues to bring positive change to kids everywhere. Today, our brand is evolving too. Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Here I stand on my own two feet. Jump shot intact, here to compete. Skilled hands were there to mend the bone. From loving halls that brought me home. My world stopped with a drive through the lane. Now give me the ball. You'll remember my name. Watch me. Orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. In the last year, there was a victim of identity theft every three seconds. Could it happen to you? Somebody used my identification and they had actually purchased the car and drove it off the lot. I didn't know what to do, but thankfully I had LifeLock. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats, and if there's a problem, we work to fix it. LifeLock provides the type of protection I need. Help protect what's yours with LifeLock Identity Theft Protection. Call right now. The Shriners Children's College Classic is a tradition that unites athletic excellence and the most amazing care anywhere. Shriners Children's is dedicated to improving the lives of children with orthopedic conditions, burns, spinal cord injuries, and cleft lip and palate. All care is provided regardless of a family's ability to pay. So to learn more, visit ShrinersChildrens.org today. And Sydney joining us up in the booth, a patient ambassador who dealt with scoliosis from Oklahoma. Went all the way then to Philadelphia. Is that yes, correct for your surgery? Yes, that is correct. Well, Cindy, talk about uh, it's not just the physical uh, 
rehabilitation you've gone through but uh, you know when you have a situation like this I mean Brett and I are both parents we, we realize it's the emotional investment it's the social side of this talk about how Shriners helps you through uh, those different facets right so when I was told that my um, work that I was doing for the yoga exercise and the bracing wasn't working you know you start to feel is it my fault did I not do enough was it you know something that I did but when I went to Shriners you know they just told me that you did all that you could and now we are here to step in and help which is so relieving for a 12 year old yeah. and I felt so comfortable going in and knowing that they were going to take good care of me my doctors and nurses were amazing it couldn't have gone any better honestly it was a great experience and I enjoy um, being around them and I'm happy that they invited me to be in this position because now I get to continue to stay with these amazing people. Yeah, you're a great ambassador. I can tell as <laughs> Thank Portland you. Lawson strikes out because when you're talking about a back surgery at that age, right? That's a lot to deal with that. That's, <laughs> that's a very anxiety driven surgery, right? And because of Shiners, I wasn't anxious at all. I just remember um, after the week of staying in the hospital, I was actually not wanting to leave I was like can we just stay in the hospital like I like it here it's nice everyone's so chill like I was ready just to stay as long as I could <laughs> well Cindy I know it's your great is it great grandfather or grandfather was a Shriner yes he was wow. my great grandfather yes so you've got a legacy there that's why you want to give back too right exactly so I didn't find that out until after my surgery because Shriners was so new everything happened so fast and so after I found out of the national patient ambassador I started learning more and looking back and I, it's just so cool that Back then, he didn't know that he would be helping his great-granddaughter, you know? So he didn't know, but he still did it out of the love and care of his heart. So that was really amazing to know. Yeah, that's a fantastic story. What goes around comes around there as far yes, as being does. willing to help out. There's Jared Dickey Batts and Sydney joins us up in the booth. So is this something you want to keep doing now for a few years to travel around and, and be an ambassador for Shriners at some of these great events? Yeah, I love it. I mean, how could you not? You know, you get to come to these amazing events and meet amazing people and do cool things like this. I never, if you told me when I was eight years old that I'd be doing this, I would have <laughs> believed you. I would, you're lying. There's no way. So it's cool to be here and to speak about Shriners and bring awareness to them in their hospitals. I just tell Alec that he's got some competition now, Pat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't know. He's pretty good. I've, I've been impressed. But he's given me a few tips, and he's helped me calm my nerves. So he's great to have as a friend in this environment. Yeah, I think, uh, Sydney, the thing I've learned of being involved with the Shriners Classic now for, I think, eight years, Brett. We've wow. been doing this a long time. But, you know, it's that, it's that, that pay-it-forward mentality. Right. And uh, I, I just consistently see that with... Not only from the patients, but all of the folks involved with Shriners. Yes, they're amazing people, and I definitely want to be here without them. And the person I've grown to be is because of them. And I'm so thankful because they have been great role models for me. And not just for me, but for my my uh, siblings. I, they've come on some trips, and I have seen them grow and watch the Shriners and learn from them. And so that's just as special to me. Ortega, the batter. And he's going to look at a strike. And in these crazy times, I think we are searching for good stories of people doing good and helping yes. others and, and willing to contribute to society in any way possible. And I think that's what's so inspiring about so many of these Shriner stories. Yeah, because it just shows that there's, you know, there's good people out there and things, you know, can seem hard. But I just want people to know that even if it seems like a bad situation, something good always comes out of it. Ortega shoots one into the right field corner. Dickey is going to score. And Tennessee reaches 10 runs. Ortega's second RBI of the game. That's 10 unanswered for the Volunteers. Single by Dickey and then the double from Ortega. Well, Cindy, now that you've learned a little bit about baseball, what's been kind of the most exciting aspect of the game, or what, what have you learned that the, you thought, oh, this is really cool? So I didn't know that home runs were like such a big thing i don't i've never seen the field and how big it is but seeing a few home runs by the players it's i'm impressed like there's no <laughs> way i'd be able to do that i hit it like three feet maybe i actually threw the first pitch and i mean it was pretty good but it just put into perspective of oh my gosh there's no way i could play baseball <laughs> these guys are awesome <laughs> well, so they, we're, we're impressed yeah, oh, thanks. yeah I, I played it professionally, and Brett played it for a long time as well, but, you know, watching this type of talent, we, we get impressed watching it. Oh, 
I know, it's crazy. It's, it's awesome, though, and I've enjoyed watching. And now I'm, I'm going to go home and I'm going to watch more baseball. I like it. <laughs> Jordan Beck flew out to left field, and that'll bring up Booker. Took over for Gilbert when he came out of the box a little bit gimpy in the fourth inning. And the best part about home runs here, when they hit them, it makes the train move. Oh, I know. I was. <laughs> I went up to the box to talk to some of the people, and they know the guy. And I, I seen him on the uh, screen, and he's awesome. I think he just loves what he does, and I love that for yeah, him. Yeah, he's a That's ham. Awesome. He, he really enjoys being up on camera. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I love the train. This is Kyle Booker, Sydney again, the patient ambassador from Oklahoma, joining us, telling us her story about scoliosis. When you were wearing the brace, did you wear that all day long? Did you wear it at night? Yes, I wore it 24 hours wow. a day for two and a half years. And um, the only time I would take a break is a shower. And sometimes if during the summer I would swim. Swimming's good for your back. And so I would try to take it off as much as possible. So summer was my prime time to <laughs> take off my brace and to go swimming. All right, so you tell us what's in the future. What are, what are you thinking about? What are you dreaming about doing? Um, I'm thinking about being an occupational therapist, actually, because that's um, involved in the hospital, but not with the scary blood and needles and stuff, you know. <laughs> There's no way I could do that. But um, I met a lot of Shriners' wives who are occupational therapists, and they've told me how much they love it. And that's so great. I, that's what I want to do for sure. Outstanding. Just saw that replay there of Gilbert when he came out of the box. Not at 100% when he was lifted after he batted in the fourth inning, and then Booker took over for him in center. And now batting for the first time. And pick try at second is not in time and Sydney I think we've heard a few other patients that have been inspired to go on and help others yeah. in their lives after being a patient after they go to school and it seems like maybe you've been inspired too I definitely have there is no better way to give back than to be in the hospital and I've realized that I've visited some hospitals and it's just it's just a good way to reach out to people you know a lot of people need help and um, I've learned that from Shriners and so I'm really excited to step out of high school and uh, go into college and move on and go set into my future. Do you know where you want to go to school yet? So this is kind of, <laughs> it's kind of funny because I was rooting for OU but I'm actually an Oklahoma State fan. Okay. So I want to go to OSU that's where my mom, my dad, my sister graduated so there's kind of a legacy there and so I would love to go to OSU and um, explore my dream there. That's tremendous. As parents, we can barely deal with our kids driving, and now they want to go to college. <laughs> when does it stop? Yeah, it's coming, Britt. When well, you got to say goodbye to that little girl, yeah. Oh, goodness. They'll be calling me for some therapy. <laughs> well, Sydney, it's, uh, it's just so great to meet somebody like you that, uh, you know, you speak so well about your experiences. That's what I think is really cool, that how God can use those experiences to, to then now ready you for your career. And, uh, you know, you've been through the pain. You've been through the hurt and all the... the the therapy you've had to go through and now you understand that so that's how I think uh, it sounds like uh, you're gonna be used in the future yeah it's cool it's just trying to help me moved on from my chapter to help someone else and inspire someone else and that's what I really liked about being the ambassador is going out there and speaking and helping others and um, definitely a God-given thing I'm very thankful for this opportunity there's going to be more. Sydney, my phone's blowing up. People are recognizing your talent. <laughs> I feel like we made Alec a few years ago. We kind of pushed him up on that big stage, and then he took over. And, yeah. and then he got to go <laughs> be on TNT and the NBA shows with Shaq and Ernie Johnson and such. But uh, there's going to be a lot of television in your future, too. <laughs> hey, I, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's awesome. <laughs> I discovered that, uh, that the talent of journalism. Maybe it's... Uh, on camera somewhere doing some journalism maybe yeah i would love to do anything like that <laughs> <laughs> you know what you never know what the future holds you know that's right but sydney when a patient goes through what you did at your age it almost advances your maturity level yes, it does. to a point where you've dealt with a lot more than the normal 16 year olds have <laughs> yeah and it feels like i'm talking to a young lady of 25 26 and i think Aww. it's because of <laughs> just what you've not only dealt with, but conquered, and, and dealt with it with a smile on your face. Yes, yeah, I, I agree with you. A lot of people have told me that I look like I'm 10, but <laughs> <laughs> I talk like I'm 25, so I guess it's a good balance. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yes. That's a good thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> We're at 40% of our fundraising goal, and you can contribute and help out. I see the work Sydney's doing, but uh, you can go to collegeclassic.org. We're going to blow that out of the water because tonight, City, when it's LSU in Texas, if they're still here in the ballpark, there's going to be 
25,000 people maybe oh my here. Gosh. It's going to be an environment unlike anything else in college baseball other than maybe Omaha. That's so awesome. Alec has told me about it, so he was like, you better stay for this game. And I was like, hey, I guess I'll listen to you, you know. He, he's helping me out, so I was like, I guess I will. So I'm excited to see the crowd, and um, I think it's going to be a cool environment. It's going to be awesome. Everybody trying to win this inning. He got the line out by Beck, trying to finish off Booker. Spoiled several pitches. The count remains full. Ten unanswered runs by the Volunteers after Baylor put up the four spot in the first. And that got him. Hit him on the hand. Yeah. I'm going to send Ortega back to second. That ball did hit the hand of Kyle Booker. So what haven't you done yet as far as the East-West Shrine game or the golf tournament? Or some of the other events that you would like to do next because the floor is open right now you're just saying what you need and we're gonna make it up um i think i've been to a lot of them um i know that in the past they've only had a few events for the national patient ambassadors but they've added a lot since after covid so um i think i've been to all of them i'm pretty sure which is obviously amazing and i'm so thankful for that but i would like to come back and continue to be invited and um meet the new National Patient Ambassador. I don't blame you at all. City, you did a great job. We're going to step aside with the pitching change break. Best wishes for what's ahead with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Making friends again, Billy? I like to keep my enemies close. Guys, excuse me. I didn't quite get that. I'm hard of hearing. Oh, hey, don't forget about the tense music, too. Would you say tense? I'd say suspenseful. Aren't they the same thing? Can we move on, guys? Please. Alexa, turn on the subtitles and dim the lights. Okay, dimming the lights. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. Perfect. I think red is more me. Giddy up. Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. It's not a Disney California. Oh, but parents like it, too. Like a lot. Take off Bonk! visitcalifornia.com let's go back and look at this hit by pitch Pat to me I wonder if this ball hits the bat certainly it could have been a swing as well well it certainly could have been and it, even if it's uh, it does hit his on his hand if that counts as a swing that could have easily been checked it looked like a pretty full swing to me but that Kyle Booker nonetheless at first base and Baylor with the pitching change. I'm not sure if that ball hit his hand, hit the bat, but uh, either way, it could have been counted as a swing. We've led the world in umpire replay reviews this weekend. I'm surprised maybe someone didn't request another. Well, Baylor lost that uh, play with Pineda sliding the third, so they right, had they did. one challenge left. The question is, do you want to use it there? I'd, certainly, Steve Rodriguez could have done it there. That one may have gone in his favor. New pitcher coming on for the Bears. Yeah, good look at uh, Hamlet and Oliver and his stats. So far, pretty good start here for the Bears. Fastball 88 to 91. Pretty good breaking pitch and a changeup. Corpus Christi native, ready to face Trey Lipscomb. Trey's hit the ball hard three times. He has a sacrifice fly to show for his efforts. The RBI he picked up in the first inning, the sack fly, gave him 23. 
in 10 games. Going to be at a Hack Wilson type pace, isn't he, before <laughs> this month is over? Well, he has so slowed down slightly, has Lipscomb in this tournament. He was pitching him pretty well. Of course, had to face that Texas pitching staff last night. Bears checked it first, and there was no swing by Lipscomb. Does have a couple of guys on base here to try and drive in. Ortega got the double, knocked in a run. He's at second. Gilbert aboard at first. Here's the 1 1. Slider by Oliver gets him ahead to count. And looks good. Seen a lot of breaking pitches so far this weekend. I think he's going to see a lot all year. Yeah, it's just that, you know, it gets that respect for the hitter. I mean, obviously, he's a tremendous fastball hitter. He has some bat speed, he's got some quick hands. These teams aren't able to take batting practice on the field. They all get an hour on Thursday. And obviously, when you're playing three games a day for three days, there's just no opportunity to do that. But he'd be a guy I'd like to stand behind the cage and just watch him go through his swings. I bet he puts on a show. I bet he does. <laughs> yeah, very twitchy swing. We talked about the whip and the, the bat speed through the zone that he creates. That's exactly what gets these Major League Scouts excited about him as well. Maryland native is Trey Lipscomb. Coming back in our direction. Nearly took out our umpire review booth. <laughs> Just making sure they're on their toes up there. <laughs> What's fun in the second level, this is not normally open, the club level here at Minute Maid, but all of a sudden fans wearing Texas colors have started to move in because of the anticipated crowd tonight. I'm seeing purple down in the crowd. The LSU fans have been here for hours trying to stake their claim. That's right. On the best <laughs> seats for the night game. So all of a sudden orange. there's fans up here on this level now. Yeah, we had quite a bit of orange from the Tennessee fans, but now you've got the burnt orange follow flowing in as well as the uh, purple and gold. And there they go. They have opened up the midsections here, the club level here at Minute Maid Park. And I'm pretty sure, Brett, that those will be pretty full as well. Really packed. With the said, no, yeah, said and done. But after that foul ball popped up, I'm thinking I had to move this coffee cup at some point. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the ball we had a few seasons yeah, ago, right? You took it off your midsection. I did, yeah. I was looking down, and all of a sudden, the ball comes flying through the press box. I'll tell you what, my seven years here, the guy sitting next to me was in his 80s. So there was a little pressure for me to be <laughs> ready. <laughs> on guard. On a line drive. Yeah. I better be able to make a play. There was no going under the table and, you know, worried about your hands. You better be dying. You're the last resort. <laughs> That's right. The uh, gentleman who just didn't have quite the reflexes that he did a few years prior. Here's a 2-2. Here's another one fouled back in our area. Lipscomb spoiling seven. That's what great hitters do. They spoil good pitches and work deep counts. The more pitches they see, the better off they are. Tennessee scored a run this inning, pushed their lead to six. Two more men out there on the bases. That's down and out, so now the count has gone full, and the runners will be able to take off early. Oliver's in full lather already, and he's seven pitches into his outing. Well, Oliver, Oliver with some good legacy. His dad played some minor league baseball. Here comes the payoff. Wave and a miss. Lips come down on strikes. The inning ends, and the Volunteers strand a pair of runners, but they do add to their lead. Ten unanswered runs. By Tennessee, volunteers flexing their offensive muscles today. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free.
Today we're at the University of Tennessee, honored to have one of our Shrine patients, Elliot, here with us. He's a patient at our Greenville Hospital. We found out he had arthrogryposis in utero, so we sought out some arthrogryposis specialists. It was a really hard road. We went straight to Shriners. We had already lined that up. Arthrogryposis is a rare congenital condition. His hands and his feet are contracted. They have decreased muscle strength. Anytime you catch yourself caught up in your ego, you realize it's more than just about you. It's your teammates, and Elliot's one of those for us. Elliot's an active guy, and he's looking to get in the weight room and do things. So he's throwing the baseball around out on the field. It's a special person that we're adding to our team. Shriners Hospital for Children provides all this wraparound care to families regardless of their ability to pay. We've been doing it for over 100 years. We have treated over 1.5 million children since 1922. If you know that guy with the hat, he's, I think, the shutter. Yeah, I love him. Go Let's take a look back yesterday at the action at the Shriners Children's College Classic. This is our Friday. Scoreboard presented by Perfect Game. Baylor, a, a one-run win early. Then LSU was down three runs, came back to walk it off in the 11th with a home run by Jordan Thompson. And number one, Texas remained undefeated, defeating these volunteers, 7-2 in the nightcap. So thanks to Perfect Game, they support our Shriners Children's team captions. And by the way, there's also a perfect game event in town this weekend in the northern suburbs in Tomball that has a thousand teams between the ages of 8 and 14 U that will even roll into tomorrow. So you think Houston's a baseball wow. hotbed this weekend? How old are those teams? 8 to 14. Man. It's called the Houston Super Regional NIT. Chase Wesner. That's an invasion of youth baseball. <laughs> Indeed. I'm involved in a youth softball tournament over the 4th of July in Denver where there's a thousand teams and I mean they take over the entire city you can't wow. get a rental car you can't get a hotel and they play softball around the clock and it's just a great event to see these young kids try to move their way up the ranks so to speak thanks to perfect game for helping out we need a busy day one certainly here at Minimate now we have a lot of great baseball and there's still plenty to play Cardoza Akendo, the batter. Facing Kirby Connell since he's come on. Only given up one base runner. That was the double by Pineda, who was then out at third base trying to steal. So he's faced the minimum through three and a third innings. And a pretty good mix of pitches. You see the slider there that catches the top of the zone and worked his fastball both sides of the plate. Had a number of good changeups down in the zone. It's a stash. That, that stash that is, I think, tied up these Baylor hitters. It's a lot to look at, right? When you're in the box 60 feet, six inches away, and you're seeing that handlebar and the flow. With the Raleigh Connell. There it is. Goodness. Raleigh finger ish. <laughs> I'll stick with my left-handed Kenny Powers. <laughs> Thought process, too. There you go. Warm with the long sleeves under his jersey on what is a humid day. We played indoor baseball. It was just a few isolated showers in the area and some really strong winds. So we've closed the roof. A lot of humidity. It hasn't affected that handlebar. There's a ball shot in the right center field off the bat of Cardoza Okendo. His first hit in three at bats gives the Bears a base runner with one gone. Here in the seventh inning. And not a bad pitch from Connell. And Cardoza goes down and gets it and gets the single. This is Alex Gonzalez. Just did miss the outside corner. Started with the changeup. Yeah, great arm side run with that pitch. And tough one to hang off. It looks like a fastball coming out.
Short lead at first, and Cardoza Okendo will go back and standing. This was a Baylor team that swiped six bases in the first inning. They got to seven before Pineda was caught stealing in the fifth, but I would say down six runs late. Base runners are a little more precious commodity. Well, they, Baylor ran themselves in and out a couple of innings ago with Pineda trying to steal third base down by five runs at the time. And yeah, if you're going to steal bases, you just got to make sure you can get there if you're down in the game. You certainly don't want to sacrifice base runners and in the middle of that Baylor lineup coming up. Give those guys a couple of chances to, to score a runner in scoring position, but uh, Pineda took the chance and unsuccessful. And a grip of the miss by Gonzalez. Got that slow curve at 73 and cut right through it. And we talked about Riley or Kirby Connell being able to extend outings. Here a piggyback situation with Chase Dolander. Dolander with a pretty rough start in the first inning. Settled down, second and third inning, and then Connell has taken over and kept the Bears off the board. There's the one two cut on and miss. That pitch started to fade on that change away from Gonzalez, and he could not resist. You know, very similar pitch. He started off the sequence with did cut out and goes right back to it. Look at that strikeout. Yeah, a lot of movement on that pitch. Gonzalez out in front and oh, fading away from his barrel. That's fouled off with the shin guard there for Harrison Cayley propelled in front of the play, but clearly a foul ball. Well, Cayley with a couple balls hit right back through the box and his previous at bat caught Connell on the foot. He was able to recover quickly and get the out. One to three on the put out. And no worse for wear. Connell stayed in the game and he has been nails ever since. Yeah, trying to get through four scoreless innings, and this was a guy last year was awfully good. He made 26 appearances. Almost had as many strikeouts as he has pitched. And you're able to pitch in 26 games over a schedule of 60-ish. Pretty much an everyday guy coming out of that pen. That's that rubber arm deal, and you usually have one or two guys in your pen that uh, you can rely on that you know, after pitching a couple of three innings can bounce back the next day. Some guys have the blessing of being able to do that. <laughs> Grew up in Missouri. We mentioned he's from South Carolina. But played his high school baseball in the state of Missouri. I think that's the one thing about Tony Vitello, too. I mean, he started to bring players from really a region. But obviously he wants to compete and get some of the best players in the state of Tennessee. We mentioned Vanderbilt at times. They go nationally and recruit some of the top players in the country. Vanderbilt attacks it with just a little different mechanism than the rest of the world does <laughs> right. when it comes to bringing in some of the top players. Well, I think that's what Tony Vitello said. He says we want to win our backyard first and build that brand where you can take it regionally. And certainly has done a great job recruiting the local players and keeping them home. He said that was just really important to him when he took over the program that he wanted an emphasis on building the, the brand of, of Knoxville first and then go out from there. And he's done a great job. He's now, you know, battling and, and winning some of those recruiting battles with Vanderbilt, with some of the SEC schools that he competes with on the field. Lipsius. In a full-fledged dive to his right to try and come up with that throw from Russell. A throw on the money might have had a chance to erase Cardoza Okendo, who had ventured far from the back. Even had asked Tony if maybe the speed by which he changed the trajectory of this program surprised him. This happened quickly. Runner going. Here's the 3-2, and that is ball four. So Connell might be... Running out of gas, so to speak. He's only at 44 pitches, but again, he's faced a lot of hitters trying to get through four innings. And now a couple of the base runners for the Bears as they turn things over. But when you're competing in the SEC, again, it, it takes selling that vision of a program to at least be able to bring the players in that can turn the direction. As you see some activity going to the bullpen. 
But this is where the fun part begins, right? When you're recruiting yeah, for right. a team that went to the College World Series? Well, that's how you capitalize. You know, you, you scratch and claw and get yourself into the College World Series when you haven't been there for a long time. And I think you want to capitalize on that uh, on that year. And certainly, that's what uh, Tennessee looks to do. They've got a shot to get back there this year, Brett. We've talked about just the, the strength of this lineup, top to bottom. And they have some depth behind it. Man, I believe this pitching holds up and Tony can figure out that starting rotation. And this team has uh, got a really good shot to get back there. I'm sure they would love to know and look into a crystal ball to see if Tidwell might be a guy that could be available for them later in the year in yeah, April or May. A, certainly a big loss. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, Blade Tidwell, highly acclaimed. Could be a top draft pick, but uh, yeah, battling some, some injury issues. Obviously, he has a bright future. D1 Baseball has him ranked 15th of the top college players available in the 2022 draft. So you can do the dollar figure number on that one. It's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah, fastball upper 90s. And he's got that uh, hard breaking ball. Yeah. And will wave and miss. How about the four innings of work today by Connell? Oh, yeah. He's been absolutely tough on these Baylor hitters. He uh, keeps that lead where it is. Time to start eating better? If only it were that easy. Fresh and Lean thinks it is. Meals with fresh organic ingredients delivered to your door, ready to heat and eat in under three minutes. So if you're looking to eat healthier, we got you. How easy is that? Fresh and Lean. What do an aerospace engineer, cancer immunologist, and bat scientist all have in common? We all have cool jobs in STEM fields. Whether it's building robots or learning to code, girls everywhere are finding their passion for science, technology, engineering, and math through positive role models and mentors. So dare to dive in, get connected, and explore. You never know what your future may hold. Learn more about these and even more cool jobs at SheCanSTEM.com. When a folded flag is placed in your hands, it can feel as if you're marching alone into an uncertain future. But you're not alone. Just as soldiers march together, the Folded Flag Foundation is there, marching right beside you. By funding educational opportunities for Gold Star families, the Folded Flag Foundation helps us on our path to a better future. March together with us. Give today at foldedflagfoundation.org. Hey, I'm Matt Adams, host of the Fairways of Life show, and you can catch us every week right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Long-form interviews with legends of the game and today's stars. If it happens in golf, we'll take you inside of the ropes right here on the Fairways of Life show. Coverage of the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by Frio. Great-tasting American Pilsner light beer, American-owned, American brewed. Again, I'll say it's a game changer if you're doing these reads. <laughs> this whole weekend takes on a different dimension. There's Bobby Dynamite up there hanging out in his train. He's ready to move that thing in a home run or two. It's quite a perch, isn't it, Matt? It's not a bad view up there. It's uh, you know, make it a little lonely, but uh, yeah, pretty cool to watch a game from that angle. I'm stuck up there a time or two. <laughs> a unique perspective on those train tracks. Meanwhile, this game heads into the bottom of the seventh inning. Baylor scores four in the top of the first. Tennessee has run out ten straight runs since. And here's Cam Cayley coming on to pitch. Now we have the all Cayley battery. Look that. Cam and Harrison brothers. I think they've done this a time or two in the backyard. Oh, man. This uh, brings back some great Little League memories, doesn't it? Some youth ball and now reunited here at Baylor. Of course, Harrison the transfer from Abilene Christian. Cam, a Baylor commit a couple of seasons ago and had a fine freshman season. Two-way player, Cam Cayley. You might see him in left field at some point during the weekend, but tonight he toes it up from the left side. Lipsius will lead off in the bottom of the seventh. Do you have greater dispensation as a brother to maybe get on a pitcher than you would a normal? Oh, absolutely. Kind of get up in his grill, <laughs> That's right. challenge him. I imagine they had some pretty good wrestling <laughs> contests when they were kids. and. having raising three sons you never know what you're going to get each day but uh yeah those boys would get after it with each other for occasionally okay. 
Kaylee is the fourth pitcher used by the Bears in the game. Lipsius has driven in the run with the ground out. He's walked and scored. He singled. He's going to beat the shift here past the speedy Richardson. In a two-hit game for Lipsius. And that'll make him feel a little bit better after he was rung up on some pitches yesterday that would leave me talking to myself. <laughs> pitches that looked like they were five or six inches off the plate yesterday. Yeah. Luke Lipsius was going to come in today swinging the bat and trying to get uh, at least some early count swings in. The Texas pitching made it awfully difficult for him. And like you said, Brett may have been a couple of pitches that were off the plate a bit, but yeah, he is swinging today. Evan Russell delivered a two run double back in the third inning. That's when the Volunteers got some separation, turned a 5 4 lead into a 9 4 game. Russell homered last night. You see the good arm side run on Kaylee's fastball. It's 87 to 88. Compliments that with a curveball slider changeup. One of those Baylor pitchers that's not overpowering, but commands the zone pretty well. Ground ball to short. Can this be two? In time at first for the double play. Pineda to Richardson on to Wesner. Yeah, nicely turned by Pineda. Clean glove at short. Excellent throw right to the midsection of Richardson and the strong arm from second base. 6 4 3. Christian Scott will bat hit a two run homer into the Crawford boxes in the third inning. Drilled one to the warning track near the fence at the 409 sign in straightaway center as last time in. This park giveth and taketh away when there used to be a hill in center. <laughs> That's right. And you'd crush one 420 <laughs> and not get a homer. Be a little bit irritating. And then you could flick one the other way like yeah. Lance Berkman did so many years and pick up the homers. Well, we've seen a couple balls mashed to center field and, and just off the that right center gap there. Jordan Beck comes to mind for a couple of swings, but the ball doesn't carry the right field nearly as much. And even with the roof closed, how about that pitch by Kaylee? Yeah, Kaylee Battery worked after a leadoff single, a double play, and a strikeout. Seven innings complete here in game two today. What if you could use retirement accounts to invest in crypto? With iTrust Capital, you can. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in your favorite crypto assets 24-7 with the tax benefits of an IRA. So instead of paying taxes on your crypto gains every year, you can defer taxes till you retire using an iTrust IRA. Or with an iTrust Roth IRA, you can withdraw tax-free at retirement because you're in this for the long haul. Start investing today at iTrustCapital.com. In the last year, there was a victim of identity theft every three seconds. Could it happen to you? Somebody used my identification and they had actually purchased the car and drove it off the lot. I didn't know what to do, but thankfully I had LifeLock. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats, and if there's a problem, we work to fix it. LifeLock provides the type of protection I need. Help protect what's yours with LifeLock Identity Theft Protection. Call right now. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game. A jersey, drawstring bag, a hat, and lanyard. As well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting Astros.com slash Buddies. Let me go to the eighth inning. It's a 10 4 Tennessee advantage. Thought maybe when Kirby Connell finished off the seventh for his fourth scoreless inning of work, that might be the end, but he's going to soldier on. Yeah, pretty impressive outing here for Connell. And he's just throwing blanks up there against the Bears after they scored four in the first inning. Nothing left to show for it here going into the eighth. Connell, the big one responsible for that. Trey Richardson, the batter. Volunteers are on their third center fielders. 
Scott, who was in left, moved to center, who replaced Booker, who came on for Gilbert. And now Stevenson is the new left fielder. By the way, before the game, the volunteers get out there in a huddle, and Stevenson's in the middle. He does a backflip, and then they go crazy. <laughs> Slightly athletic, right? Trey Richardson singles to center. Walked and scored earlier, but he's on to begin this eighth inning. You need one guy who can do a bat flip for every team. That tends to get the energy going in the dugout. And in pre game warm ups. These games have been streamed across the country or across the world and picked up regionally and nationally in the MLB network. A nice partner as well. And I know there's a lot of baseball fans out there starved for some games, waiting to see when the major leagues might be able to start spring training, build towards opening day. And I think the casual fan that's been tuning in this weekend, if they haven't been hooked in recent years by the epic College World Series or some of the big time games that you and I see in the Big 12 and the SEC, the emotion of college baseball does draw you in. Oh, no doubt. You know, a lot of excited fans and, you know, we watch uh, every season, you have some surprises as well in the postseason. That's, I think, what uh, you know, keeps you involved as a fan. It's, uh, there are some dominant programs. The SEC, obviously, Brett, have you, you've seen over the years, has become a dominant baseball conference. But, you know, you always, uh, you, you'll see, the, like, the Coastal Carolinas, Coastal, for sure. example. Yeah. McKenzie wraps one on the ground to first. Fielded by Lipsius. Throw down to Shorts. Going to be in time to get the out. The ball was dropped on the exchange. Lawson was in a hurry to try and turn a double play, and the throw from Lipsius was a little bit elevated, but he does get the lead runner. I think that's the draw of college baseball. And then, for example, tonight, when you get uh, two highly ranked teams like LSU and Texas together, there's just going to be a ton of energy in this Minute Maid ballpark. It's going to feel like a playoff atmosphere. And we're only third weekend of the season. I'm wondering if tonight's crowd, and we're still curious what it may finish at. They've been opening up additional sections Normally the club level not available for Shriners. It will be tonight as Kyle Devin bats. If we might have the biggest crowd for a college game outside of the College World Series in the history of the sport. It could very well be. Yeah, I think uh, you, you said it a couple of times, Brip, but it's, it's worth mentioning again that you know you, you get hungry fans that have been starved to come back out to the ballpark. And get two great teams playing against each other. So a pop-up handle by Lipsius to retire Nevin. And that's the second out. And I think is a recipe for what's going to be a, just an awesome night. Our middle game yesterday ended up going the 11 innings in four and a half hours. So it did throw that nightcap about an hour and a half late between Tennessee and Texas. Those fans had to hang with us, so to speak. They did. Those waiting for that game. <laughs> The Texas fans, for sure, Tennessee showed up pretty well. Tonight, it'll be a little bit different with uh, a lot of fans traveling in from Louisiana to support their Tigers. And, of course, uh, the Texas Longhorns ranked number one in the country after a great start, 10-0 on the season. This is Antonio Valdez, and I'm wondering with both of those schools if their biggest alumni base isn't Houston to begin with. I think you're right for LSU outside of South Louisiana region. That's why here is this might a be a ton it. of fans in Houston. Yeah, could be the same thing for Texas. It would have to be Dallas or Houston that would provide them an opportunity to bring their teams here. And then, of course, their fans travel well in addition. That's right. And both teams, I think it's safe to say, could find themselves back in the College World Series this year. That's up the middle and pass loss, and he couldn't come up with it. Valdez, who knocked in a couple of runs with a single way back in the first, collects his second hit. And Connell now trying to get through five innings. Got the ground ball, but not where he wanted it. And Lawson couldn't make the tie to play. Right. Better needs a bunch to get back in it, but uh, one swing of the bat by Chase Westner. And I think that's. Uh, Gonna be it for Connell. Spectacular job by Kirby Connell today, and Vitello out to make the change. Four and two thirds innings, 57 pitches for Connell. Not giving up a run. He has a couple of runners he's responsible for. He'll turn it over to the bullpen. I'll tell you the new pitcher of the moment. 
It's Ford Truck Month, Texas. With new inventory arriving daily, it's time to get after it in a Ford F-150 and the Ford Ranger. Stop by your Texas Ford dealer today and let us help you custom order your truck your way. Then we'll get after building. It's Ford Truck Month. Visit your best in Texas Ford dealer today. Place a new retail order and get a Ford F-150 with 2,000 bonus cash plus complimentary maintenance at your best in Texas Ford dealer. Behold, unlimited wireless for only 30 bucks. That's pretty cool, but you know what's cooler? Saving up to 400 bucks. Exactly. And if we really want to take it up a notch, get all that and nationwide 5G included. Ooh, nice shot. Send that to me. I got you. Break free from the big three and get connected to the nation's most reliable 5G network. Get the new Samsung Galaxy S22 series on Xfinity Mobile. And right now, save big with up to $750 off a new Samsung device. Switch today. What if your resume was more than a resume? What if it could adapt and improve? What if it opened doors you didn't know existed? Created opportunities that let you be seen, heard, even help get your foot in the door. I got it. An Indeed resume never stops working for you. Hey, college baseball fans, or just baseball fans, you're in for a treat. Here comes Ben Joyce. Get those radar guns calibrated <laughs> and get ready for some heat. Exactly right. Joyce with that uh, upper 90s delivery has touched 100 numerous times. Uh, just one of those uh, line of Tennessee pitchers who can light up the gun. You think of Joyce, you think of former volunteer hurlers Andrew Schultz, Garrett Crochet. Joyce uh, stepping right into those shoes and we'll see a couple of hundreds this afternoon against these Bears. See more than that. It's back on February 23rd when he pitched against UNC Asheville. He had 10 pitches clocked at 100 plus miles an hour in one inning of work. Here's Chase Wesner. So of course he starts with a slider, but that's okay. Right. <laughs> His fastest pitch that night, 104. That's where the gun breaks. You know, fourth appearance of the season, his numbers are spectacular. Now there's 101. There it you says go. Sinker. <laughs> 101. I don't think it's sinker. And the fans, of course, get a little bit excited when they see triple digits. Yeah, four strikeouts, no walks on the season. That's low cheese. So last year in the major leagues, there were 720,000 plus pitches thrown. 720,000 plus. The fastest pitch was 103.4, and Ben Joyce hit 104 earlier this year. Well, there you go. He's off his game a bit. Only 101 tonight. <laughs> I mean, you start to wonder what the human body can produce beyond that. Is there another level? Yeah. Is that it? I mean, we've got to be getting close to the ceiling. It really is amazing. And now you look at the, the abundance of pitchers that are touching 100 plus. That's what is so amazing about this game. Runners go. And that one's lined in the right for a base hit. McKenzie's going to score. The throw to third is late. And Westman singles in a 99 mile an hour fastball. Baylor gets their first run since the first inning. Well, isn't that the great lesson in baseball, right? Doesn't matter how hard you throw, it matters about the location. The fastball was elevated, caught a little bit too much of the plate. And Westman stays back and had that opposite field approach with two strikes and he delivers for the Bears. Picks up the RBI and now Bears with runners at first and third. And a couple of outs in the inning. That run charged to Connell. He was hoping to get out of here with four and two thirds scoreless frames. Esteban Cardoza Okendo. Single to three at bats. Oh, I would say you better be limber in that box if you're going to get 102 at your ankle. Yeah. That'll break a shin. That's self-preservation. He's uh, dancing quickly. If I got hit at my ankles where there's not a lot of padding at 102, you might have to get the golf cart. That might have gone too. Yeah. That could cause a grown man to cry. Looks like a specimen out there on the hill, does Joyce? Yeah. 
101 for a swing and a foul tip. And that's the pitch the Bears have to avoid is that fastball up in the zone. If that thing's between the belt and the letters, can you get to it? Very little chance of catching up to that pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even when you're sitting on that pitch, it's hard to square up if it's above your hands. Yes, and yeah. At 100. He's thrown eight pitches. I think every fastball except one has been triple digits. The base hit was at 99. The ball got hit, yeah. And for Cardoza, Kendo, you're a couple fastballs inside. You're not real comfortable with that box right now. Not back again. 101. Cardoza Kendo can come through with a base hit and find a way to get on base. And just push across that sixth run. Now puts him in a position where they can at least tie it with bases loaded. Found back and out of play. Okendo seen some heat in this sequence. Here's the one two. Chop it a third. Lipscomb gets the big bounce. That's a strong and accurate throw across the diamond. That pitch was at 102. And the ground out ends the eighth. What an out. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs. That's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long. You'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Hi. We're Warby Parker. And we're all about making vision care convenient. That's why we developed the Virtual Vision Test app. Use it to renew your expired glasses or contacts prescription from home with your phone in about 10 minutes. If everything looks good, a doctor will renew your prescription for $15. It's as easy as reading the eye chart at a doctor's office. Except you're at home, on your phone, like you probably are right now. Download Virtual Vision Test today. this telecast talking about Tennessee looking for a bounce. Actually, we did that in the open. That That's right. Destroyed the Denver air. But we were curious of the balls be able to uh, put up numbers more representative of what they've done this year, even against much better competition. The answer has been yes. So they've scored 10. And see what they could do here in the bottom of the eighth inning. They'll do it against the fifth favorite pitcher of the night, Adam Mearhead. Head making his 2022 debut in the relief role here for the Bears. Here had the 6'2", 180-pound sophomore at Rockport, Texas. Rockport Fulton High School. And the starter went two and two thirds innings today, and then it's been a handful of relievers since. This young man made three appearances last year. Head coach Steve Rodriguez, three and two thirds innings of work. Cortland lost in the shortstop. The nine hole hitter leads off, then it'll be Dickey and Ortega.
Tennessee scored four in the first to tie the game. They got a run in the second to take the lead. Four more in the third and added a single run in the sixth. Volunteers in their final game of this classic tomorrow. They'll have the early game against Oklahoma at 11.05. There's a chop of the third. Charging is Cardoza Okendo, and he's going to throw out Lawson for the first out. A good fastball inner part of the plate from Mearhead. And saw the play from the Bears' third baseman, Esteban Cardoza Okendo, and out number one. Mearhead's fastball since low 90s. Her ball and a changeup. Jared Dickey's looking for a four hit game. One time he was retired, he lined out to left. <laughs> Dickey was the SEC freshman of the week. Earlier this year, when over the course of four games, he was retired once, and he scored nine runs, and he walked five times, hit a couple of homers. So he's had a few of these stretches now in the first <laughs> month. Pretty streaky, I guess you could say, right, with Jared Dickey? And he comes into the game 10 of 16, that is 625 to start the day. And he's had another three for four on top of that. It's a liner right to Trey Richardson. Perfect defensive positioning kept Dickey from getting that fourth hit. And a good scouting report they had. Richardson pulled over towards first base about five steps into the grass. Behind the dirt and perfectly placed. Ortega's had a couple of doubles to knock in a pair of runs. A shot of Drew Gilbert. Baseball pants are off, and Tennessee fans hoping that there's nothing serious going on with what appeared to be a hamstring pull. Yeah, that's the only disappointing aspect today. You know, they got down four nothing. It didn't look good. All of a sudden, they've answered and taken a big lead. But the concern will turn towards Gilbert. Yeah, no doubt. Big part of the middle of that volunteer lineup, and I mean, you hate to lose him, but uh, if you had to pick a spot, if somebody was going to go down, you know, early in the season. Have a chance for him to rehab and get that leg back in shape. And those hamstrings are tough when you when you play as all out as Drew Gilbert does. He relies on those legs quite a bit. So hopefully it's uh, just a tweak and nothing more than that. It looks pretty chill in the dugout. Of course, as I mentioned, Tennessee will have the early game tomorrow, so that'll be a decision if you're ready to play. If you were playing the night game, maybe you had a chance to get up, get moving, felt a little bit better, but Hottie's really not used to getting up and starting to get loose at about 9 a.m. Yeah, that's, that's a tough wake-up call for any team. I mean, look, UCLA's had it for two days in they a row, have. and, and uh, they're a West Coast team. Which is 7 o'clock. <laughs> like 6 o'clock, yeah. <laughs> it's been some tough scheduling for the Bruins you go to September on the college football schedule I think those Midwest teams always love to bring in the Pac-12 squads or the West Coast teams and say how about the 11 a.m. kickoff yeah right, right. nine o'clock body time <laughs> start getting ready for that game about a week in advance start getting up at uh, 5 a.m. two outs here in the bottom of the eighth and that one's fouled back and out of play Mirrorhead sticking with that fastball and trying to stay alive. Come off a couple of tough ones down in the zone. Ten five Tennessee. Served to right, Nevin retreating a couple of steps. He'll make the catch, and Tennessee goes in order in the eighth. So on we go to the ninth inning. It's a 10-5 Volunteers advantage. 
Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego. I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. H Town High School Sports. The excitement, the emotion, white, 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 the, white, the passion. Only on H-Town High School Sports with Todd Free. See it right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Thanks, have been a good time all weekend here at Minute Maid. Can't wait for the nightcap LSU in Texas. Still three more outs to go in this game. Redmond Walsh comes on to pitch the ninth inning. Premier relief pitchers in college baseball. Got his first save back Tuesday against ETSU in that 4 1 win. The problem, of course, is his offense has not allowed these pitchers to be in many safe situations. That's exactly right. I was going to say a couple of weeks. Got a lot of opportunities for Redmond to pick up any saves, but he has been good to start the season. Making his fourth appearance. Three innings, one punch out, no walks. He's yet to give up a hit. Tennessee native is third in program history with 17 career saves. And this, of course, not a safe situation. This next one will tie in with Sean Watson, who had 18 for second place, and put him six away from the program record. Come back to that in a second. Got a pinch hitter here in this ninth inning. Nicholas Bolsano is going to hit for Gonzalez. I saw the first pitch breaking ball, and it's a good one. Pitch off of that. Slider change up. That's some spin to combination. Yeah, sure does. Now quickly, nothing in two. And Dallas able to hold up on that change up. Just a lot of deception is delivery. So again, if he gets to 23 career saves, that he will equal the program record. Want to take a guess who has that all-time Tennessee saves record? Don't overthink it. Hand. It's kind of a fun name, and I'm sure there's volunteer fans right now watching saying, well, I know who it is, but well, I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if Pat Combs knows who it is. I don't. How about Todd Help? Oh, man. Yeah, you don't think of Todd Help as a, as a pitcher, but he your mind's not trained for that. College pitcher. Uh, unless yeah. you're locked in on college baseball from yesteryear. You know, that was back in the era where you'd see some guys yeah. be two-way players. That's right. Well, there was talk when he was drafted of him possibly being a two-way player, but uh, he was such an outstanding hitter. He picked the right choice. It, yeah, and if, of course you, you get to hit in a place like Denver, Colorado, and <laughs> make quite a career out of hitting. Lozano swings and misses. Watch him try to expand the zone here. That pitch had some nice run away from the right-handed hitter. Yeah, sure did. Tough changeup from Walsh. And he is just a master of deception. Uh, you know, obviously, we look at that changeup and the break that it has, that arm side run, and very similar run to what we saw with uh, Kirby Connell. And that's the beauty of this game: is you don't have to overpower guys with the 102 mile an hour fastball. Ben Joy certainly does that. But, uh, you go. Ben Joyce combination and you bring in Redmond Walsh and wow, that's a contrast. <laughs> that is a contrast. Harrison Kaylee batting, singled 
beg your pardon, he walked in his last at bat, so he's 0 for 2 officially. He's going to wave and miss, so a couple of quick strikeouts to begin this Baylor ninth inning. Uh, just great command of the strike zone, and that time blows the fastball right by Kaylee. And you start to think, I've got to stay back and wait for that changeup, or stay back and pick up the spin. And Walsh has just enough fastball to get it by you. The twixt in between. Pineda back to the top of the line. Been on base three times. He did strike out in his last at bat. Tennessee has run out four different pitchers. Dolander, the starter, didn't go as long as maybe he would have liked with three innings. A 40 pitch first inning did not help. Connell went four and two thirds inning, giving up just one run. That scored after he departed. Joyce was bringing the heat for a couple of batters, and then you get Walsh flipping pitches in there from the left side. All kinds of movement. Try and close this one out. This one's in the air towards that left field corner. This is Stevenson, loses his hat, catches the baseball. Tennessee down four runs, back right out of the gate. Come back to win it. Ten to five. Yeah, no panic out of that dugout, and uh, Tennessee just does what Tennessee does. They scored a bunch of runs, and scored in bunches. They erase that early deficit. Jump out ahead big in the third inning, and they close it up. Big win for the Tennessee Volunteers to get back to one and one in this tournament. Ten to five, our final. What a matchup coming up in about an hour or so. It'll be Texas and LSU. Huge crowd expected at Minute Maid for the Shriners Children's College Classic. There's our final total. For Pat Combs and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolan thanking you for watching. Busy day of baseball. And our first game today was a run rule contest. UCLA taking down Oklahoma 15 to 3. A lot of runs early in this one. Each team had a four run first. But Tennessee pulls away late for the 10 5 win. Evening up there, stay here in Houston at a win and a loss. So again, stay tuned. Texas to LSU, the nightcap, coming up in a little bit. Again, for Pat Combs and our crew, I'm Brett Dolan, thanking you for watching from Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston. Big moments. The best fans. Feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. Watch me. Watch me roll.